patrolling the dually, asking Skull citizens to report for duty. Rowena Dooley asking Seoul citizens to report for duty. did some rough prototyping work on dynamic advertising, which will contextually fill in the in-game panels and screens throughout stations with content that's reflecting the interests of the player that enters its proximity. The same system could be used for showing large-scale broadcasts and warnings throughout the universe based on what's happening in the game at that specific moment, either globally or locally. Good evening, good evening, and welcome back to the Soul Citizens. I'm Griffin Gaming RPG, and we are back. It's Sunday, March 26th, for another fun-filled show with a wonderful cast of, uh, I, I was going to say characters, but I said char citizens. Maybe that's a better way to say it. I'm thinking characters because I'm thinking of movies. But we've got some really wonderful people here with us today. Some very special guests that are joining us, some familiar faces and familiar names that are here, and we want to give some shout-outs to them right at the beginning of the show. First, we're going to start off with Nate but Natronics from EE Studios. Nate, how are you doing? I'm doing well. Thanks for having me. I, I love Soul Citizens. I've been following you guys for a long time. Well, we follow you too. You already know that, right? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we follow and critique, but we are so happy to have you here. And we have, the Soul Citizens have, have been watching you guys progress from your very first video all the way yeah. till now, your collaborations you're doing now with Zark Media. It's just been really great to see you guys grow and you guys have been putting out really quality content. So. We appreciate having you here. You were, did you come before when we had the show last year on media? Were you here? So, so I couldn't make that. That was the one, one you couldn't but, make, right? You sent one to someone else from your team, right? Yeah, I had Nettie, who was uh, the old, an old leader in the org elite expeditionary, okay. which is now defunct. And okay. then uh, Boogie, who does a lot of the voices in a lot ah, of the stuff that we do. Awesome. Well, welcome. We're glad to have you here. Thank okay. you. And next to him, uh, the the compadres, the duo themselves, New Soul, Fist to Face, and Pops in Space. How are you guys doing? Uh, great, great. Good, good, good. Now, ooh, ooh. let me ask you guys something, Fist and Pops, because you guys weren't around back in the day when that video we just showed came out. Were you All around, right. Nate, back then? Uh, which video? The video we just showed at the beginning of the show. Oh, I haven't even, I didn't see it. I'm, oh, you didn't I'm see working it. on a connection thing here. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Pops and Fist, I, you guys weren't around when it came out, but have you guys seen that video before? First time. It came out from who? Who did it? 
who was there? Well, I mean, obviously, I wasn't back there then, and uh, this is my first time seeing it. Oh, so it, it was your was first CIG? time. That was, yeah, that was CIG. Yeah, absolutely, oh, really? absolutely. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I, I thought that was somebody compositing. No, okay. no, no. That that was okay. the real deal from back in the day. Um, you know, Cal Roddy, I see you're smiling. I want to introduce my other mm-hmm. co-hosts here. Cal Roddy's here. How are you, Cal Roddy? Hey, Griff. Hey, everybody. Glad to be here. And last but not least, Jade, our astronomer star watcher. How are you, Jade? Hello. Hello. Yeah, I'm, I'm very happy to be here on this show. Good. Now, Jade and Calrati, you guys remember that video, right? Yes. Yeah, yeah. Yes, we do. It was oh, an ATV. It was an ATV. And and Pops, Fist, uh, mm-hmm. Nate, let me tell you guys, when that video came out, People got so excited because we just thought, oh, the Van Duel are coming. That was what, like seven years ago? <laughs> Six years ago? Yeah. The attack Genesis, on Port O. It's going to get destroyed. Yeah, the attack on Port O. That was like one of the That's first. Where it started. That was one of the first mm. things that started up that, that fact that Port O was going to get destroyed. CIG was showing us some clips. Ooh, Port O is still there. Nothing's happened. Um, yeah. But. Um, yeah. You know, I do want to talk about what they were talking about there. They were talking about this aspect of advertising, uh, but we also want to expand that because we see IG is also taking same of those same uh, areas in the show for advertising and has begun to use them for something like broadcasting. We've seen it, for example, at Invictus, uh, when the screens all of a sudden become active to tell us where the fleet is uh, during Invictus, when it's moving around throughout the system in Stanton. Um, and so... Today's show, folks, is we're going to be talking about what it means to be broadcasting in the Star Citizen universe, both what we know about, what CIG has hinted to, and then also ideas. Uh, everybody that you see at the bottom of the screen uh, have have groups or businesses or organizations or come together to create areas in media, whether it be audio or visual. Um, they're there. Jade works with these folks as well. Um, and so we're going to be kind of talking about what does it mean to broadcast? We got all these monitors and screens, Nate. Have you ever thought about it at any point what all those monitors and screens are doing in the game? Because CIG definitely has them all over the place. Yeah, it's something, uh, it's something that Zark and I talk about a lot about how we can uh, incorporate, uh, you know, citizen creations in the verse. Mm-hmm. Um, I know we've talked about some kind of... Uh, I know Jade. We, Jade has the radio station. You know, mm-hmm. we would like some kind of cable platform mm-hmm. or uh, um, something more than just their stuff would be cool. Mm-hmm. But it's tricky because a lot of the stuff that we make, we don't ha- necessarily have all the rights to it. We like the music. We sometimes get special permissions yeah. to put music in our stuff because um, we don't use. We don't like. I don't make profit off EE Studios, um, so that would be tricky to use the screens for stuff like that. Mm-hmm. But one thing Zark mentioned um, that we could put stuff on those screens with would be if Sig gave us some kind of media uh, media folder that had sounds and and music. We do have some of that, yeah. and like maybe graphics and other things that w- that machinima creators could, could use, use. Mm-hmm. that would be safe to then put stuff on the screens in the game. Well, do me a but, favor, hold that thought, because when we get to the end, we're gonna be talking about your, your wish list, and that's a great one to add okay. to that. No, no, I'm glad you mentioned it, because that, that's the type of thing that we obviously would love to be able to have access to. You know, they gave it to for content creators for doing stuff on YouTube and Twitch, but like you said, to create something specifically for that, you don't have to worry about any rights and licensing issues, and it's like, and a lot of flexibility it gives you too. And I also yeah. wanna ask you, did you, I'm going to go to uh, New Soul next. Did you attend, didn't they have a content creators thing just recent? not a content creators, but a machinima creators thing this last month? Didn't they do like, like we did the content thing back in January. Didn't they do something yep. recently for folks to do machinima and stuff as well? Well, Hub, Hubnet, which is something that Zark uh, initially created, then I came in and we partnered up to sort of build it out. Mm-hmm. We hosted the first uh, machinima content yeah. creators roundtable. Right, right, right. Um, yeah. That's what and, I was asking uh, about. You guys did do that, right? It was like, was it last month when you guys did it? Or was it this it, month? It was last month. Okay. It, yeah, it was recent. Though. It was recent, right? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. All right. All right, cool. Well, maybe at the end, you can kind of share some highlights from that from us as well. Yeah, Fist, for and, sure. Fist and Pops, you guys, you know, personally, I've mm-hmm. talked to you guys because you guys have been producing music. Uh, first, kind of just doing it as a thing that you love to do, but I've been cracking the whip on you guys. <laughs> <laughs> about this idea of the possibilities, right? The possibility, I mean, mm-hmm. there's no guarantees like Nate said, but there are possibilities of seeing things integrated into it. Let me ask you guys real quick, cause you guys have worked with uh, Paul Shelley, 
You guys have worked with Anna uh, Demetrio. You guys have worked. You've even you've even communicated with um, the big guy, the big composer. Um, oh yeah, the guy Pedro, who, um, Pedro yeah. Camacho. Yeah, Pedro, Pedro Camacho and stuff, right? You know, um, are, are, yeah, does that something for Atmo Esports? Yeah, for Atmo Esports. So has that kind of inspired you guys to look at this from a different perspective? What was first starting out maybe is love, but now like, man, maybe we could actually contribute beyond just you know putting it on youtube but actually something that may go into the game yeah um well you know we did this just between me and my son for years we've mm -hmm. just been in the house we've got so many uh tracks and and different things library of stuff we just messed around with and mm -hmm. we now get a chance to bring them back up and use them uh yeah, we do. Um, I have. I, I know you said at the end we're going to talk about it. It is an uh, aspiration. I have contacted them uh, about it, the dream. Okay. And um, we'll talk further about that at, on the end. Okay. Um, but yeah, we, we really do. We hope so. Uh, it's not just for us, but for everybody that does music is what we're hoping to, um, you know, kind of Little shake deal. them up and let us do. Yeah, yeah, nice. Now, you guys know there, you know, one of the things we talked about with music in particular was. We know games like GTA Five, for example. You've got the radio stations, right, where there's music being broadcast that you could turn into, and so it has become such a popular thing that name artists, right, put their stuff into into games nowadays, right? Uh, mm -hmm. I'm I'm hoping that CIG really mm -hmm. like makes the community first to a certain degree. You know what I mean? I would love to see them keep it community driven more than bringing in licensing from other artists. It'd be great to hear other people's stuff, but I think if people in the community are doing stuff, you guys will custom tailor it to the space that we're mm -hmm. in you know, versus this random right. music that people are putting out just because mm -hmm. there's a name attached to it. Uh, real quick, guys, I want to kind of elaborate on this show because it's a little bit different. Even though we're talking about visual and audio, we're really talking about what does it mean to broadcast throughout the game. Right now, we're just in Stanton. We know we're looking forward to Pyro, Nix, and all these other great places. But CIG has given us some information when it comes to broadcasting. Now, right now, the main thing that we deal with with broadcasting in the game um, is not music per se, uh, and not really words. I mean, in some ways, I guess words is a factor too. But the main thing that we've been monkeying around with is comma rays, right? Because right now, comma rays represent the crime stat, right? People do criminals and stuff like that. Let's people know what their crime stat is or something along those lines. Jade, I was talking to you when the show opened up about this thing about the comma rays, and you were sharing some cool information that I talked to you about to ask about verification. You said, yes, it's true. Um, Xylowers, wow, Xylowers, Z Z thank you, Xylowers, for that follow. And Thrakazak, thank you for the community sub earlier. Thank you. Yeah, Jay, talk a little bit about the, how communications go between players right now, what, what has been added now that maybe some players don't even know. Right, so as far as communications in-game between players, you know, we, we obviously have the in-game text chat, we have, uh, you know, VoIP. Mm -hmm. um, there's ship hailing, which has been in for a while. Like you can target somebody's ship mm -hmm. and, um, you know, open a channel like they can answer, you know, very sci-fi style. <laughs> and then we have the, um, I guess you could say like game-wide communication through VoIP now. Like somebody, you don't have to have them on your shard or server. They can be in a different region even. Mm -hmm. And it, it seems to work. Yeah. Yeah, my, my buddy Cosmic, shout out to you, Cosmic, uh, mentioned this the other day to me. And I was like, wow, you know, I've, I've done stuff in server, you know, same server before. But he said, no, there was a person that was over in the UK and they were talking to somebody who was on the US server in game. And I was like, wow, okay, possibilities. Now, I don't know. I haven't heard CIG talk much about that. Um, but again, I would love to see where things like the comma rays start to expand beyond just crime stat that communications go down in a system. Calrati, um, what would be some ways you think that, I mean, do you think that's a reasonable thing to do? Or do you think it would frustrate people? Do you think that, you know, if a comma ray goes down, it also means that the range on their communication is limited. Maybe it's only, you can only transmit up to a million miles or 2 million miles. You know, maybe with maybe within the orbit of planets, you can still communicate, but you can't communicate from R Corp to freaking Hurston, right? I mean, I, do you think that would be frustrating for players? Um, if they put enough price into it, maybe it's something people, are, as soon as it goes out, if I'm getting paid well, I'll take a chance. I mean, what do you think? Yeah, definitely, Griff. I think they will have to offer some kind of incentive because if you're only, you know, tying it to, um, you know, severing the communication and then person's not just going to jump to Discord or something like that, you know, but it is going to benefit 
uh, um, to actually, okay, taking it down or keeping it up, mm -hmm. uh, to, you know, to maintain some kind of communication, be it, okay, maybe, just maybe, you need these comrades uh, to help transmit information on the economy. You need mm -hmm. these comrades to help transmit information on things that affect the game. Mm -hmm. If you take down the comrades, okay, then that's going to send or sever some of the broadcast so that you can't actually update or keep um, the, the economy updates to your mobile glass up to date mm. if you're doing some kind of trade run or so. Yeah. Um, so as a result, you have to directly go to the location to actually get the update on whatever prices that you needed to um, to know on yeah. your ledger. Yeah. Uh, so I definitely agree that they'll have to have some kind of incentive. And um, I think, um, I think they, uh, there are some pretty good um, ideas and can be integrated into these things rather than just having them, you know, just independent there. Yeah. Jay, this kind of karate kind of filled in a little bit of what your concern was about people would just jump off and go into discord, right? That, right. But if you put in uh, those, those other in-game elements that have nothing to do with, you know, some third party communication, especially something like trade numbers or information that you can only get through the game. That might be a much more viable thing, right? For the, for the yeah, absolutely, absolutely. Mm -hmm. um, if they you know go that route, they definitely want to incentivize using the in-game system mm -hmm. over you know something outside of the game, and um, you know that that's a great idea. Mm -hmm. um, Cal already mentioned. I, I really hope they you know they go down that road because um, it, it's all about immersiveness, right? Mm -hmm. And it's it's also a lot simpler to just have everything in game and then you're not like, you know, going out into discord and, or having to, mm -hmm. unless you want to. Right. So, yeah. 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 I think it's a great idea, especially the economy thing. I mean, come, imagine an org who goes in, like for those of you who played Eve, everybody knew about Jita, right? That was the place to go to do your trading. So imagine in star citizen, you go somewhere and because you're going to flood the market or do something and an org actually shuts the comma rays down. So that there's no communication going out about what's happening in the market at the, you know, for whatever time frame that is, you know, uh, Nate, I saw you kind of smiling and rocking your head. What, what did you think about that idea of comrades? Yeah, I think what Calrati said would be really cool. Mm -hmm. And I'm all about trying to make it as immersive as possible. Um, I think, you know, I'm, I'm one of the weird players that actually uses the in-game phone call system. Mm -hmm. Uh, and I try to encourage people that I get in game with to use that to yeah. communicate. I, it's very glitchy and, you know, it doesn't work all the time. But to me, it's way more fun to, like, mm -hmm. call my buddy in game and see his face pop up on the screen. <laughs> or no it, or just, no head. Like today, I was with Colossal. Right. Just had a neck. <laughs> big spot. Right, which is perfect for Halloween time. I mean, when that stuff happens. So. <laughs> all right. All right. Right. This but I, I, yeah. Go ahead. I'm sorry. Go ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead, Nate. No, I'm just saying. I, I thought what Kairadio said was really cool to have it. You know, dependent on like the in-game trade system and all that stuff. But uh, I do think uh, trying to make it as immersive as possible, even with down to how we communicate. Um, you know, outside of global chat and things like that mm -hmm. is. I, I think that would be very exciting. Yeah. Fist, yeah, yeah. I know your brain's already thinking because you're always trying to come up with some some serious theory crafting with this thing with the satellites. Um, do you think that would be a good way to expand it? You know, that actually certain aspects of the game, or do you see some problems with it? I think it does. It, it's it's a good um, thing, part of the game. Like you said, when you talked about the comma race, um, Kyle Roddy touched on a lot of good things there, um, points, you know, sparking off, um, you know, missions as well as, um, you know, I, like I said, again, you talked about, the, the system of the audio. I just hopefully that when it does come online, when they do use it, that mm -hmm. it's very robust. Mm. You know, because like you like like um like Nate just talked about it. You know, it's very janky. It's you yeah. know because usually something like that will be very off putting to people. Yeah, and they'll go back to what work to what works. Yeah. You know, I and mean, even today when I was on it, I had to do some tweaking. For some reason, I don't know why, but the game. This is the first time I've ever had to do this, Cal Roddy. I had to go to my option screen and go to comms and change my microphone there, which I've never had to do before. Normally, mm. I just went to F1 mm. and monkeyed around with that audio on off thing. And that was it. But for some reason, my mic was on something totally different. Now, maybe it was a fluke, but when I was having problems, one of my other friends was having the same problem. He said, that's what he had to do. And sure enough, we both had to go in and put our mic. So that, and that, of course, that took me out of the game, you know, in order to do that, you know. So it does need to be something pretty straightforward. Like you said, Fist, that people don't get frustrated. You know, you're trying to talk to your friends and stuff because people will very quickly, like you said, just go default right back to Discord if they've got a, if they've got a hassle with it and stuff, you know. Okay, well, listen, let's move on. We're going to get past this whole thing with the comma rays. I think those were some great suggestions. CIG, I hope you heard Cal Roddy. Those are great suggestions, I think. Um, 
let's jump into the very first thing here. Hey, how are you? Miles Eckhart. Friend over Crusader said you've been building quite a rep. I run a modest security outfit. I'm always on the lookout for capable people who don't rattle. If you're interested in picking up some extra work, we should talk. I'll send my details. Okay, let me uh, ask Jade, I'm gonna come to you. Do you remember where that was from? Maybe you can give some people some background of why that's so particular, because it has something to do with the Moby glass, right? Right, yeah. <laughs> so that was originally from uh, Gamescom in 2016. And um, it was, you know, basically a, a demo to show like what their plans were for, for the future. Um, and so, you know, talking with somebody through, uh, the Moby Glass, or in this case, having a mission giver like Miles Eckhart, you know, basically call you, you know, uh, you know to do missions. Um, yeah, so that that's what that was all about. And we do have, you know, the um, being able to talk to somebody, uh, you know, through VoIP and VoIP, mm. but we don't have the mission givers mm. yet giving us missions like well here rowena dooley when we have you know xena mm. threat or or uh nine uh you know the siege of warrison but we don't see like um animated rowena dooley on the screen yet but i'm, I'm sure that's something that you know is in the works or planning yeah i'm gonna pick on pops a little bit here and fist again because mm -hmm. they weren't around back when this first came out and we were so excited in 2016 when we saw this <laughs> but as jay just said we are able to see people call you on when you're on your ship, you know, if the little screen pops up and you see them with their head or without their head. Uh, but this mm -hmm. whole thing of the mission giver was a really cool idea. Pops, what did you, what did you, cause that, that's, that was, you know, he's in his hab and he gets this call. And right now all we do is just get like text, right? When we get a mission, that's about it. It tells you to go to mm -hmm. somebody's base and go shoot people. But you think that's more immersive having the video in there? Oh, I absolutely more immersive um I, I mean this game is going to i mean it's taking a deep dive in immersiveness if, if that's such a uh thing but you know uh mm -hmm. yeah it, it certainly brings a new level of uh npcs mm -hmm. uh, you know that um you know they're not just something that you walk up to and yeah. maybe the arms and the lips move where they i mean <laughs> this is almost like you know realistically a person mm -hmm. uh, that you're interacting with yeah. and actually probably maybe one day we won't even be able to tell the difference yeah this just so you'll know the background on that video what made mm -hmm. this video cool was that when they started showing the demonstration it started out with him waking in the hab and getting that message but the background you see is actually where he's at when you went to go talk to him so he's in the cafe, right. Cafe Musain, I think it is. Yeah, Cafe Musain at Le right. Levski. At Levski. And so oh, we, yeah, and we had never yeah, seen okay. it. We had never seen Cafe Musain at that point. But the background there is where he's at. And sure enough, when you go see him, he's sitting in the seat right where that's at, which made mm. it so cool. You know what I mean? Right. Because yeah, we didn't know right. where he was. He just told us to come meet him. And then you go, it's like, oh, wow, this is the dude I was just talking to, you know? And, and you yeah. know, that system, that system's been in uh, for quite a while. Like yep. we, we had it with uh, Eslin Mackin, the air traffic control mm -hmm. guy at, at uh, Levski. You could actually go and see where he was mm -hmm. and see him talking to ships, hailing, you know, uh, or, you know, welcoming them to, to Levski. And now uh, the only thing like that, that we interact with is if you um, have the security try to stop you, they'll come up on your, MFD screen, and that's them actually in the ship talking to you. Mm -hmm. That's not just like a um, a video that plays. If you could look over their shoulder, you would see them actually in the ship mm -hmm. doing that. Absolutely. You know, it would be really cool mm -hmm. if you if you walk to the mission. I'm there, and he has to tell me to stop because he's communicating with Jade. That would be <laughs> I mean, yeah. that, that, that hey, pops, ridiculous. Yeah, and pops, that would also be another 10 years. So we're yeah. going to go ahead and keep, mm. <laughs> we're gonna keep going. Hey. Well, Jade brought it up, so let's talk about this yeah. one. So switch it. Switch it, Jared. No, no, point of view, point of view, Jared. Uh, pilot, Jared. There you go. Okay. Wow, okay, that video just kind of acted weird. I don't know why I did that. Let's see it again. So, switch it. Switch it, Jared. 
No, no, point of view, point of view, Jared. Uh, pilot, Jared. There you go. Okay. okay, so if you guys didn't catch it, that's what Jade was talking about. I used to always, I used to always call him the pothead when I would come into Levski, mm -hmm. Jade. <laughs> Whenever I see that guy, yeah. I call him the pothead. But um, that was one of the things that we do have in the game where the, right now I wish, I really wish Natronics, man, I wish that they had all the controllers that that would happen when you pull into a station, not just the little yeah. verbal thing, because we did have it at left ski and I'm wondering why they didn't really give it to us, you know? Yeah, it's just because... Uh... Maybe they're not getting paid enough. Uh, the AA traffic controllers. <laughs> to be on camera. To be on camera. Yeah. But that was another time when we saw that being introduced. You're right, Jade. Um, when we went to the left ski for the first time, we got to see that in camera with the air traffic controller, which I thought was great because there's personality there. You know, not just that robotic voice that says you're clear to land and that's it. So I always thought that yeah. was very cool. And then, yeah, I, mean, hmm? I wouldn't be shocked if, you know, that's, that's the long-term plan. It's mm -hmm. just, a matter of priorities there's so many other things they're working on yeah. and th that's one of those like window dressing kind of ones like yeah it'd be really cool to have it but it's not like necessarily yeah. right now yeah, it's, it was that was a good demo of it yeah it's a test bed right i mean that's what yeah. they're doing they, they bring things in they take things out and it, it does give us a hint to cig obviously we know that's the direction they would probably want to go because we have all these different mfds and monitors all over the place the last one we're going to take a look at is the most recent version of the use of moby glass in these screens and mfds and that was from last year's Citizen Con, and it was with Jax. And you guys remember he did a lot of his communication running from his Moby Glass. Whoa, 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 whoa. No need to resort to fisticuffs to decide whose Aegis ship is the better. No, 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 no. For crying out loud. Okay. So let me talk about that one a little bit more because there's some details here that we brought up in a previous show. And Pops, I know you've mentioned this before in the past as well. Mm -hmm. um, the Moby Glass. If you look at the bottom of the Moby glass that he's using, he's transmitting from, it has a slightly different layout. And there are also, let me get it running again here. I don't know why it stopped. It's supposed to be on forever. <clears throat> there is a count there of how many people are watching. Hmm. Now, back at the bar citizen, we had, I think it was the last one we had, this virtual bar citizen. Brian Chambers was with us. And someone asked Brian, basically what they said was, when you guys show us stuff, whether it's in uh, concept art or something that's, you know, done on a trailer, is it done just for the sake of, you know, making it look good or will it be something that we'll see? He says, if it's in a trailer, then it's something that they are, we are going to get. Didn't say when, but he said, if it's in there, then that's what they're working on. And this whole new Moby Glass layout, I couldn't zoom in enough on it. Or I didn't have time enough to cut it up right and try to make it look good. But one of the things we do know that is there, now Pops, I think you were the one who talked about this, that there is a thing there about how many people are watching and followers. Mm -hmm. So Cal Roddy, what are some possibilities here for being able to transmit? You think they'll give, because they've talked about transmitting from the Mako, but from the Moby class, is that something that as players we might be able to do? I would hope so. Um, one thing I was actually wondering is if, for example, um you're doing a particular activity let's say you're e studio so zark or you know you're someone who actually has some kind of reputation tied in with a particular location let's use um uh Lowell or mm -hmm. hurston security or even hurston for instance and they have their screens they have their monitors there and based on your reputation uh where you can actually transmit information through broadcasting uh, that's presuming cig allows a codes in some kind of tether between the Moby glass to upload some kind of live imagery uh, to their monitors. Mm. You can actually have or set up some kind of mission or if a mission is available, um, you could actually broadcast what you're seeing um, to their monitors. Um, in a, may, uh, the amount of views or the amount of alpha UEC or anything that you gain not necessarily be based on the players that may be in front of the monitors or who knows it could be um, because they can always set up some kind of probes to detect, okay, how many um interactions or node points from players and npcs actually stop and stare and look at the monitors mm. but it would be pretty cool to actually have something like that to give news broadcasters and those things an extra incentives to do this kind of profession yeah nate or pops mm -hmm. or fist you guys got any thoughts about the moby glass the possibilities because you know the moby glass is supposed to be something that can be upgraded and changed mm -hmm. and modified right it's, it's apps basically any thoughts yeah, about right. what you see in here with this well i mean you know 
I think the Moby Glass is going to become, uh, I mean, next to ships, is going to probably be uh, the most important thing you have in the game. Mm. Uh, you know, we, we saw on there where, um, you know, where you can give people, you know, uh, money in in game mm -hmm. currency, right? right. In there, that's going to be big. I mean, uh, I don't know if you want to, you know, really expand on it too much now, or you know, wait later. Well, I want to keep within the context of broadcasting. Know. I mean, that's my big yeah. thing. You know, this thing of, you right. know, being able to record or whether whether it's recorded or live, like what Kelrati was saying. Mm -hmm. I'm really interested to see. It's it's. I mean, it, 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 yeah, it, 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 I mean, it's so much that you can broadcast. I mean, mm -hmm. uh, rescue. Um, you know, you're. I mean, when if you're in, in trouble in your your location, and it, let's say you're in a cave, mm -hmm. and uh, you're you find something and you don't know what it is, and maybe somebody in your org, you know, you think they may know, you can mm. broadcast that to them. Yeah. Um. And, and then even you know even beyond um your your own org to try to get answers and get help and yeah. You know, I mean, this is is it's uh man endless possibilities yeah 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 I, I, sorry okay. go ahead <laughs> no i was just going to say that um i i have a question because my, my thing is is looking at the moby glass the moby glass is like to reminds me of what you have today your smartphone basically can do everything mm -hmm. um staying in the context of broadcasting though what's going to be the difference for me using my moby glass to go out and film something than using a mako well, the Mako is yeah. going to be your ship, right? And it's got a camera on. It's got zoom lenses. I mean, it works like a camera, right? Right. So I'm just curious. That, go ahead, go ahead. Right, because that, that that's what I really wanted to know. It's it's, it's like it's like having the iPhone 14, right? Um, and that or the Samsung, the new Samsung for um phone that has a very good uh camera and everything like that versus a red. Yeah. You know, like where, where's your benefits in you yeah. know, your pros and your cons on that? I, I think I think one is just the portability. You know, now right. I'm not. I'm not saying whether or not yeah. the Moby Glass is going to have this level of functionality. Maybe just like how when we're when we're in a ship and we make that call, and you know, you, you can see me, you can see my head, you can see where I'm walking. You know, mm -hmm. maybe that's another way of looking at it. I, I don't know. It's. It, I. I don't. It, there's so much going on here because he actually not mm -hmm. only records himself, but obviously he's turning his wrist. He's doing a whole lot of stuff. He's able to show the ships outside. Actually, when he goes to the shot with the ships, he actually comes mm -hmm. off the Moby Glass. They, they actually take us into that scene. But right. when they're showing him, he's in the Moby glass. And it's not the first time they've done that. When that, when the, uh, I don't remember which ship it was the previous year for Citizen Con came out. It was when the uh, Odyssey or something, I mean, remember there were, some guy was snuck him onto a ship to show him and he was running down the hall and he, he was using his Moby glass then to televise as well. So it wasn't right. the first time we've seen him mm -hmm. do that. Um, but this time we saw the apps on the bottom. And that was the thing that really, you right. know, the information I should say on the bottom. And that's what really got me with this followers, how many people were watching thing. Yeah. Because he, he <laughs> even transmitted this from Pyro to Stanton. But go ahead, mm -hmm. Nate. It was that, yeah. Oh, that's right. It was that far. I'm sorry, go ahead. You know, I think going off of this theme here, this idea we're talking about, I think it would be cool if I could pull out my Moby Glass in game and I could broadcast and people could go to F11 and see who's broadcasting live right now. Mm. And they could click and watch either me selfie cam or mm. me facing the other way, recording whatever I'm recording. The disadvantage would be if I'm recording, my arm is occupied with the Moby. Mm. So I can't be like with a gun and the Moby. Mm. And then maybe I could also broadcast privately where it's like, I'm broadcasting with a special code that yeah. only certain people that I give the code to can tune in. Mm. So it can be like surveillance style mm. stuff too. Uh, or maybe I see someone getting pirated and I broadcast it and I do like an SOS thing. So people, it pops up on everybody's uh, HUDs mm. and people can tune in and I'm recording live facing with my Moby glass. Mm. Hey, these guys are shooting people at area 18, you know, whatever. Yeah. I think that would be taking this to another to level that to that level or incorporating some kind of uh video camera you could buy in game that you could use in a physical way i think the moby glass makes more sense yeah. they, they've shown um previously camera drones in fact there was a a scene on one of the around the verses of a guy dancing at 
um, Grim Hex, and they ha had uh, camera drones mm -hmm. on him, and you could see him up on that big screen. It was basically showing, like, you know, yes, we we have this idea to have camera drones, and you know, you have that maybe as the in between being able to broadcast from your Moby Glass to then having like an auxiliary camera that you know you can control mm -hmm. to then like the the Reliant Mako, which would be a big zoomable camera you know, pan, tilt, mm -hmm. and maybe additional, um, you know, they've talked about like video editing in the Reliant Mako. So maybe you'd have more extensive editing with the ships, just to answer Fisk's question. Um, hey, Jay, yeah. remember they also did it with Matthew McConaughey. Remember at the uh, Pioneer, yes. right? He had the yeah, drones yeah. that were out there floating around that were covering them and oh, projecting yeah, it on the that's screen. That's one that everybody, well, most people would have seen that one. Mm -hmm. Good call Griff. Yep. Yeah, yep. absolutely. I, you know, I was thinking too, Jade, I was going to ask you, um, there have been plenty of movies where we've seen, if we build a little bit off what Natronics just shared, movies like Alien, where they got off the ship and they had the camera that was built into the helmet, right? Yeah. What if there's some type of thing where, like you said, Nate, on your Moby Glass, if it's talking to me, I could hit a button and then it does, if I also have that button that kind of just like what a cell phone camera does, where it changes it from transmitting from my wrist so now transmitting from a camera that's built into my helmet. That way, yeah. anything I'm seeing moving my head, you know, that's what's being transmitted. Like we do in Discord, right? We watch each other play. But it could be something like that even they could come up with. Like you said, there's a lot of possibilities. We're not saying CIG's doing this, y'all. That's the waiver for the day. <laughs> right. We're just saying exactly. some ways we could see them go because, we're, mm. you know, what, we, what they've shown us so far, there's some directions they could go with communications and broadcasting in the game. Okay. Yeah, but no, Nate brought up an uh, excellent idea. I mean, mm -hmm. that's, you know, that's going to make pirating just that much harder if you can, you know, just flip your, you know, your Moby glass up and call for help and they may be five minutes away and, um, you know, yeah. Five, uh, you know what I just, five minutes you know away and 20 minutes to get ready. Mm -hmm. Yeah, go ahead, Nate. What are you going to say? Well, I just thought is uh, <laughs> what, if, what if you could also tap into uh, ground location camera systems? Mm. Like, I could, like I could go, hey, Shubin 13 uh, mm, is break a code. pirated a lot. Oh. I, can, I can click on their live cam. But then pirate. Like watchdogs. Okay. Right. Yeah. Exactly. Watchdogs. Yeah. yeah, that's what I was thinking. That's but a then great. pirates can also hack those systems. Like they mm. could take them down. Right. So it's like, oh, am I going to go to Tram and Myers today? Because I can't see their, their feet is down. It's been down for 12 hours. Like, what does that mean? Or, Nate, how about this? You guys have walked around Hurston and several other places where there are security cameras all over. Yeah. Who says, like you said, that there can't be just a way to hack into a system? You can see whether there are guards in the area or see yeah. whether or not someone else has taken over. But you got to work for it, right? I mean, CIG is always into that whole thing. You got to work for it. So this hacking thing could go beyond just not just hacking and opening a door, right? right? Or breaking into a ship, but breaking into security systems and things of that nature, which would be great for the Moby Glass, you know? Yeah. Really, really cool. A little mini game or something to get you in there and you can cool. see what's going on. Or stealing an encryption code from someplace to be able to gain access, right? Mm -hmm. And those encryption mm -hmm. codes can change. They can rotate, right? So it's never the same, right? You can't right. just pass it on to somebody else. A lot of cool stuff they could do with that. Okay? Mm -hmm. Awesome, guys. All right. Let's jump to some stuff that we already talked about. We just kind of re refresh you guys' memories on this. Um, Jade talked about this earlier, that there is hailing. Uh, you can hail targets. You guys know that. You can target someone. You can hail them, say, hey, how are you? Or you could say, hey, surrender your ship or pay me a bounty, whatever the case may be, right? The, the hailing is in the game right now. Um, then there's system-wide hailing. We talked about this as well. This is when you go to the comms channel. Not, this is not the thing where you go and <clears throat> you do a hail, by hitting target and then reaching out to them. But this is when you go into your comms, you see the little antenna symbol there and you can call somebody else who is in the game somewhere throughout the system. And then lastly, I wanna ask you guys about org communication. Um, what do you see for possibilities of how that can work? Uh, I'm gonna go to, go to Nate first on this one. As far as orgs go, orgs go, when it comes to reaching out to each other broadcast wise, because uh, CIG has talked about, you know, we've been looking for Org 2.0 for a while, ways that we can connect with each other as far as playing together. But what about when it comes to being able to broadcast information or communicate with each other? Uh, you're being attacked, for example, right? Um, yeah. what, what can they do that allows you to remain connected uh, if you are on some moon somewhere and you really need to get a, a, 
You ain't got time to be typing no message. You really need to get a verbal message out in game. Mm -hmm. I think you should be able to establish uh, some kind of party chat that doesn't go away. Like, like you always get in and you have your radio set that is dedicated to mm. a certain group, for example. So maybe I have my soul citizens radio frequency mm -hmm. and I can broadcast on that. And it will not only will it go out to any soul citizen playing the game at that current time, mm. but maybe somehow it'll ping their accounts on spectrum. Mm. Like if they're not on, um, but I think it's as simple as creating a dedicated channel that has some kind of uh, lasting function, even when you log out. Mm. Um, okay. To me, yeah, yeah that's. Fist, you see anything about that for organizations? I think that's a cool idea. What do you, what do you think, Fist? I do think that's a cool idea. Um, to when Nate said something, kind of made me think about you know how the incentive to using the uh, communication system because. You know, one thing about with Star Citizen, you can be in within multiple orgs. And let's say, you know, one day I'm playing with another org and I'm in their Discord. Mm -hmm. and, but I need to respond to you. You're in, you know, Test Squadron. Mm -hmm. I don't want to jump out of that Discord to jump into Test Squadron just to say something. I can just hit that button mm -hmm. and let's say communicate directly to you over in the game. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Yeah. So that's one way that could hopefully incentivize people to, you know, really using the communication device, and especially within orgs over that, you know, that function. Now, Pops, let me ask you, mm -hmm. what about espionage and spies, right? I'm playing like I'm in, mm -hmm. I'm in Test Squadron, but I'm also over with EE Studios and I know they out there trying to do something in the game and I'm playing like, oh, I'm their friend. And yeah, guys, I like what you guys do. And I'm tuning into these two channels, listening to these guys. I mean, is there some pros and cons mm -hmm. to that in real time being able to communicate uh, like that? Yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm, you know, I'm not a spy person. <laughs> you know, um, wait, you're not, dude. We, no. that's, that's that's the best. Wait a minute. We 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 play Splinter Cell. That's like one of our favorite games. How do we not? He said he's not a. He said he's well, not a malicious I, spy. <laughs> <laughs> right. That that's what I'm referring to. Cause I mean I'm not going um you know, spy against my my own org, my own because the only orgs I plan on being in is ones with my friends. Okay. Okay. Um so, you know, I I, I wouldn't do that. But the, you know, the uh communication in orgs, I mean that's gonna be tremendous. I mean you you you're gonna have um shipping. You know, when you find a price, you're going to communicate mm -hmm. that with maybe, you mm -hmm. know, people in your org, yeah. in your org and, and they need to get the um, Laranite together at, you know, because it's, it's, it's at the um, uh, warehouse. Yeah. And yeah. you, you know, you need to call um, science. Maybe if you're working on something on the endeavor mm -hmm. and uh, maybe it's two or three people that, that, need to be involved in this particular mm -hmm. uh uh thing also you know the uh, banu merchant man uh, i mean if uh wow um translation is mm -hmm. what i'm getting to you know it, i mean it is it is so much you may not know what they say but maybe you can phone home you know <laughs> that's what translate for you okay all right yeah but you said something though griff <laughs> about spying right and I know we talked about, I know the MSR has capabilities of data running mm -hmm. and hacking. So what if, I don't know what, 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 what of the ship or maybe the MSR may have the function, but for functionality of picking up a transmission. Yeah. There, you know, unfortunately there's not enough information. I'm, I'm not saying there's not enough. There's some information the CIG has alluded to both for the Terrapin as well in mm -hmm. relation to, cause I think they showed the Terrapin is the one that was really catching transmissions going back and forth in its trailer. Uh, the MSR right. has been vague, you know, uh, as a right. data runner. So I'm, I'm not sure. Jade, you got any thoughts or lore in relation to either one of those well, ships with, you know, yeah. snatching up communication? Yeah. So on the MSR, uh, you might recall there's a... Hey, Meg. Wow. Hey. Thank you, Meg. <laughs> Thank, Thank you yeah, for the Meg. raid of 10. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. So like there's like a dish on top of it that you know, like raises up and all. It may just be rule of cool, mm. but um, which they said you know, it is. 
<laughs> yeah, yeah. But, you know, Who knows, things, though, right? Yeah, exactly. Because we don't have it, that mechanic in game yet. So mm -hmm. we, we don't know yet. Yeah. And that's really where it is. I mean, we, as far as data running, you know, we left off the OG data running ship, mm -hmm. the Herald. Yes. And yes. it had those, it used to have those fold out uh, comma ray things, remember? Um, I don't know if it still does. But like, you know, I, I'd assume that was for eavesdropping as well as, you know, just relaying information. Yeah, they took that antenna off. It was kind of cool when they when, yeah. when it was in the, the, what do you call it, asymmetrical mode. It had the nice yeah. dish on it and stuff. Yeah, yeah. But, like, the answer is we don't know yet. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I, I'm, I'm not sure about that one. But those are great suggestions in relation to that. Calrod, you got anything before we move on past the orgs? No, actually. Fish definitely touched. Um, he hit the nail on the head with, with what was what I was going to talk about with regards to the importance of it and alliances, because sometimes you may not be able to have a permanent link with someone in an org, but, you know, if you're forming a, a temporary alliance with someone, you could just instantly, uh, um, you know, connect that and have that, you know, as a possibility to communicate with them instantly. Mm. So, yeah. Okay. Gotcha. All right, cool. Let's go on. To I think, uh, go ahead. just real quick, I think as far as like org communications, you know, we already have these separate org, um, channels in spectrum right and they're right. talking about bringing more spectrum into the game so if we're going to get anything like that i think it's going to be through more spectrum integration in the game yeah that's all yeah, that's a good point good point okay all right let's so let's go to we're going out of ship to ship now let's talk about in game uh areas uh one of the areas and pops talked about this earlier with trade is in ec ec the economy T the tdd um cig hasn't really <laughs> talked much about this in the sense of broadcasting information. We do know that right now your Moby Glass from time to time gets these updates of the status of uh, the prices of certain things in the game. Um, but when it comes to this broadcasting, and you've got these big boards, right? You go in there and they've got everything up there, all the different minerals and resources are running down there. Um, and, I, and, I, and I'm assuming they'll be in real time. Um, how do you think that they should handle this as far as, let's see, I'll give you an example. You're in Nix and you're dropping off a load uh, fist. You're, you're in Nix and you're dropping off some stuff there. And you just happen to know that Griff has been storing up copper for like two months waiting on the price to drop. And you just happen to see at that moment uh, that that information has, it has dropped. Um, it, it, it is, but you're two, three systems away from me. Right? Should you be able to transmit that information from that distance, or is there some other way that it needs to be transmitted? I, I don't know. In in real time, what do you what do you think about that? I mean, I know there's the no. fun side of it, but then there's also the okay. real side of it. You know? No. Like if <laughs> if 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 I'm four systems away mm -hmm. and something you about to sell within that system and. The update is supposed no, it should not happen that way. That's my opinion. Please don't kill. That's my opinion. Okay. No, it shouldn't be that way. But let me ask you a question. They, you know that people are gonna, Jade said this earlier, people are gonna get on Discord and communicate that way. Right. 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 So no, is there anything that they right. could do to is there something work around that would incentivize people to, you know, I don't know. What's mm. what's what's an incentive? Is any, any I thought I won't put I won't put all the weight on fist on this one. If anybody's got any ideas mm. of how do you do that that I, is tough i think it should be in real time and the way you maybe counter that uh that sort of cheating because it is a game and we it is cheating in a lot of different ways mm -hmm. so, you know to make it more playable and more fun mm -hmm. i think maybe there's some kind of tax that gets sucked out the further away you are like okay mm. i told him this but he's 10 systems away so that's 10 percent per system you know, just to, <laughs> just to simulate to simulate some right. kind of penalty that way, maybe. That's interesting. That's a lot. The thing is that that all runs counter to what CIDs actually told us. Like about one of the reasons there is data running uh, between systems is that there's no faster than light communications right. or travel in Star Citizen's uh, universe. Right. So. All the information you see on these boards, if you're going from one system or another, that would have br been brought by data running, either NPCs or players, to then update that data. So that's that was what they've said. Now, they can always change that. They can retcon it. And I, I agree. I would like it to be instantaneous. I'd like them to, you know, 
do some space magic, subspace communication or something, because people will just go and use Discord or they'll create, you know, sites where you get everything updated instantly because, you know, there are people feeding it. Like, yep. I mean, there's already the UEX site for trading right now. Right. Where you can, yeah. But, but my question was what, and, I, and we agree with you on it. I think my question is though, what can CI do to incentivize it to keep people in the game? It's I, hard. I know. That's what I'm, I'm just trying to come. I'm not saying we're going to fix the problem. I'm just saying, <laughs> yeah. like you said, the third party things that are out there, you know, sometimes we don't know if, how timely those things are. Right. I right. mean, does it maybe, okay. If I'm looking at the TDD at uh, Hurston and I'm seeing the prices of stuff going in there, is there a way for me to bring up or call up what the prices are in Pyro, even though I'm in Hurston? Cause that's well, real time. And, and that's, that's what I'm saying. Yeah. I'm saying like, you know how they've got those conference rooms and stuff in those areas, mm -hmm. you know, maybe those, there are terminals mm -hmm. that you can go to mm -hmm. that I could actually click on it and say, what's the price of so-and-so running in so-and-so right now. It would be the, there'd be like a little thing disclaimer at the bottom last update and like the date and time maybe. And, and, and here, check it out. You can make it so that no matter what those times and dates are, that there's a delay to any third yeah. party so software that's out there. They don't get it until 30 minutes later or 15 okay. minutes later. But if I go into that little room, y'all know how when you go into Hurston's big TDD mm -hmm. room where all the gold is, the glass rooms, maybe there's terminals mm -hmm. back there. I'm willing to go back there and pay a fee or something. I get on the computer and I can actually say, tell me the price of a Grecium in so-and-so. And I see there, and I see the, I see that particular system's prices. Now I know what the prices are. I found it in game, right? And if okay. I need to tell people in my org, hey, we need to get ready to go book the so and so. Y'all go get your ships loaded up. We need to get the whole D out and take that mm -hmm. fifty thousand whatever we got out. I'm just trying to figure out ways that it can remain within the game. Yeah. No, no shade on the third party people, y'all. We love them, but I'm, I'm, I am trying to keep the immersion aspect of it because I don't want to have to hit, you know, alt tab and then jump to a website, go pick up and see how much greasy mm -hmm. I'm selling somewhere and then jump back in the game. Yeah, I, I think that's a good idea. I, I don't know how they'll, they'd be able to incentivize it to where the majority of people use it, but I hope they find the solution. Yeah. yeah. So they could do, oh, I'm sorry, good. No, no. Go, go, go. Uh, uh, possibly it could be wrapped around uh, reputation where there is, mm. there could be a general mm -hmm. shipping that's done, but mm -hmm. you may get, according to your rep, you may get things that the general public doesn't have. Yeah, we talked about yep. that yesterday about garbage, mm -hmm. right? Maybe if you pick up enough bottles and cans, <laughs> the people in whose okay. pyro will give you their information, mm -hmm. right? I mean, <laughs> yeah, yeah, but mm -hmm. that is, you know what pops, it's not a bad idea though, in the sense of, let's say, mm -hmm. let's say it is pyro, right? Not to be funny, but I'm just picking pyro because we're familiar with it. But let's mm -hmm. say you've got a reputation with a certain gang, you know what I mean? Or if it's another mm -hmm. system with their government, you're in good standing with them. Maybe you're able to access stuff in real time from a monitor. Then maybe if you're a criminal, but then mm -hmm. again, the criminals need to be able to get access to, maybe they have to hack, you know, mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. maybe that's how they get their information. You know, yeah. if you don't have yeah. a good so, reputation. Go ahead, Roddy. So there, was, there was one other thing that I was thinking about because a few years ago, some, someone was asking, okay, do we actually have to go to a particular location um, to be able to, let's say, let we, we go to the trade terminal, right? Mm -hmm. And only when we go to the trade terminal or we go to the, to the uh, to that particular location, then we can reserve our cargo. Now, if, um, well, it's just something that I was thinking off the, off the back of my head. If, for example, it needed to be some kind of pinging, right? And we needed to receive the signal, um, just as how we receive the, um, the update alerts. Mm -hmm. um, from that, we can actually communicate with the location directly to say, okay, I confirm the receipt of this ping that this update was received to my character. And as a result, I can actually reserve the cargo that way for a reduced cost. Mm. Um, versus, for example, um, if someone in Discord told me the price, I can reserve it, sure, but I have no guarantee to actually get it because I may not have received the ping because the comare between, um, you know, Stanton and Pyro um, or some other locations, um, those set of comrades were down. Mm -hmm. So I had no way to receive those pings to actually reserve my cargo um, by the time I get there. Um, but if I receive the ping, 
um, let's say Stanton and Terra, they of course is UEE, so they have great reputation there and I have a good reputation with the folks at Hurston. Mm -hmm. Then once I receive the ping on some kind of trade broadcast, uh, broadcast channel, I can confirm it. I can reserve my cargo so by the time I get there, I can get it at a reduced cost or I can actually get it ready to confirm the reservation and buy the order, which is someone whose friend told me about it. I never received the ping and I may or may not be able to make that reservation for that cargo. Mm, interesting. Mm. Interesting. Okay. All right. Well, that's the TDD game. We're going to move on all the possibilities of what could happen. Let's talk about um, social areas in the game. Uh, these are some of the areas we know about. Uh, the various bars in the game. And I'm going to reach out to you guys. I know you guys, EE Studios, I know you, Jade, I know you guys have used these in your machinimas before. Uh, Pops, Fist, I know whatever you guys see this, your ears are always tuned in to what's playing in the background, especially because we're getting tired of hearing the same songs all the time. So, <laughs> um, what are some things you think that could happen in bars, in, in places like this where we, people stop to get drinks, they're maybe meeting up with their org friends or just socializing? Are there some broadcast related things that you would like to see happen in the bars or is it just music and that's it? Oh, most wow. definitely. Yeah, yeah, it's fun. Well, no, I was just going to say, I'm probably going to say the same thing you're getting ready to say. I mean, definitely, mm -hmm. um, you know, with this, with, 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 like we talked about GTA, um, having a radio station, you know, well, not just, they have several radio stations, excuse me. Mm -hmm. um, being at Air, Air, Air Corp could have their own radio station within uh, G Lock Bar or uh, Hurston. Uh, so on and so forth so you can kind of cater you know different styles of music mm -hmm. to different areas mm -hmm. um that's one of the things like like for example like i've been you know working with paul um and that's why i've asked him about when doing the lore makers guide was like you know what is the cultural background of the band new just like coming up i don't want to speak of you know about a, a future project too much but you know um the Tavarin. You know, to Devarin, you know, their cultural background is uh, North African and Japanese, mm -hmm. you know, so I have to think about that, you know, in context of, uh, you know, what their, you're creating their cultural influence. Exactly. Mm -hmm. And I mean, you and know, the music, the, the, I, each one mm -hmm. of those spaces has their own unique music, too. It's not like they all sound the same, which is one of the things that's kind of unique. Um, and I know, Nate, you were talking about this a little bit earlier about, you know, what are some of the hurdles it would take for, or I almost want to say requirements it would take if you guys wanted to submit things. For example, in the G-Lock bar, there are monitor screens. When you yeah. go into that bar, there are four of them. Mm -hmm. I would love to see things broadcast like when they do the races, right? When we have something like the Stanton Room 7 or whatever, you know, that stuff go up there uh, on those things. But I also would like to see content that goes up, like like what, what you guys do, East Deal shorts and things like that. So if I'm in the bar, mm -hmm. I might just see an advertising for, you know, one of the vehicles or something, but I could turn around and maybe see somebody's video that was submitted, you know. Yeah, uh, I'm I not sure what the yeah. hurdles are for that, but um, that's what I would like to see. Yeah, I, um, if I can jump in, I, I would like to see DJ, if that's possible. That's coming and up. Then, DJ's coming up, Pops. It's on the list. Oh, okay. Don't get there too soon. Uh, <laughs> it's coming up. All right, hold on to it. Hold on. Okay. But, and, and there's a reason why I'm saying hold on to that, because that's going to be a whole nother spin, because DJing can expand into a whole lot of areas, but we will, mm -hmm. we are going to cover that. Um, but anything else in the bars? Calrati, Jade, it could happen in bars, broadcasting? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. So, so some people might know that I did back in uh, 2019, I did a big bar tour, like um, mm. it was for International Space Flight Day, Yuri's mm. Night, and it was, a, you know, get a couple luxury ships, put the whole server on them, and we were going to go to each bar, you know, and, and socialize and drink and, you know, nice role crawl. play, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, mm -hmm. a, pub, a space pub crawl, exactly. Mm -hmm. And one of the things that, you know, people commented on is it would be so cool, like, since we're talking about G-Rock, um, that place was the, the scene of the first karaoke th mm -hmm. that I know of in the Star Citizen, uh, in, in Star Citizen, when a, an org mate of mine uh, decided to um, sing with his guitar over uh, VoIP um, the song Spectrum. Uh, by Zed, <laughs> right? Yeah. So like stuff like that, because it has that stage, right? 
um, you know, maybe ha put a couple props like instruments that people could pick up or like, a, a, you know, some turntables. We'll get to that later. Mm -hmm. um, the, as far as the screens, absolutely. Stanton Sevens, Daymar Rally, um, the new racetracks, um, mm -hmm. you know, the competitions there, um, XGR, um, news orgs like Zark Media. Mm -hmm. um, and another thing that I've noticed that they've done with um, Star Citizen Live is Jarek put out a call for commercials that people make, like mm -hmm. for different companies in, in the game. And right. those could be aired, you know, the community can fill in a lot of that content for those screens. Mm -hmm. And um, as far as like the stations and the music that's playing, like you said, it's, it's different. It, you know, Wally's music is, is different from um, what you get at, M and V bar in Lorville is, you know, from you know, from uh G Lock. And right. you know, I just got that answer uh the question answered about S pop, mm -hmm. right? So like in the Centauri system, they have a whole genre of music that like is, you know, they're known for, right? So these different systems will have, you know, different music and um I think that's gonna be reflected in the bars and these other social areas. Yeah. I'm glad you mentioned wow. about the G-Lock piece because um, one of the things that Fastcart was showing me once, he was playing uh, Fastcart, you have to refresh my memory, Final Fantasy fourteen, I think it was you were playing, but they had this area where, it was, where, where community people went to to go sit out and play instruments. It was like in a park. And, it, and it's regularly filled. I mean, there's like eight or nine people playing instruments and it's literally people just hanging out, listening to these people produce music in game. So whether yeah. it be, like you said, like a karaoke, you know, yeah. the, the instruments, I don't know. These jokers will be taking these instruments and put them on their ships, but I get what you're saying, okay? Yeah. <laughs> you I know, mean, they, 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 can't, they can't leave, they can't leave the bar with machines. the instruments, right? I know. Yeah. But, but, but yeah, I mean, I think to be, because what I'm trying to figure out is what can they do to create that draws people, right? And yeah, instead of maybe me watching the Stanton 7 on Twitch, I would just as easily tell my friends, let's meet up at G-Log Bar and let's watch it on the monitors in there while we're in game. You know, yeah. that might be the alternative. Some people are still going to watch Twitch and that's okay. You know, but I'm just saying, again, we're just trying to think of what are those things that could be immersive within the game? You know? Yeah, and this, this wouldn't be immersive, but I've heard people say they should put CitizenCon on those screens. They and should. For me, that, I, I don't know yeah, if like, yeah. it breaks the fourth wall, but I'm good with it. Oh, okay. Go ahead, Nate. It I, I someone made a comment about seeing the actual bands we see posters for in the game too. Mm. Like going to a gutter wash concert at Grim Hex, yeah. that would be really yeah. cool. Yeah, that would be cool. That'd be awesome. Okay. All right. Well, that's the bars. Let's shift from something where people are at versus something people stare at. These information boards, they show information. Uh, this is the one that's in New in um, Orison. Uh, show things and we've seen them there where they show the routes for trams and trains and stuff like that We've seen them flash up advertising for different ships and we've kind of also seen them flash up This one shows the weather in Orison believe it or not it actually tells the temperature and everything uh, The one in Hurston tells you the air quality uh, And then it also tells you like here you are on the map Any other pertinent information that could pop up here? Um, that that would make people stop and look at it versus this because right now we run right past them you know, we don't really stop and look right. at these things. I think if you included actual, like, say a player kills another player for whatever reason. Ooh, wanted, huh? They're, yeah, they, they, <laughs> they like, get bounties pop up on that board, and it mm. says their actual name in game. Mm. It has their With, face. Yeah, mm. maybe it has their character's <laughs> face. But then it would be everyone wanting to get on that board. They'd be killing, <laughs> be killing everybody. That's true. That's um, interesting. Crime stats, though. Crime stats mm, could translate into that. Mm, a list of names mm, that could come up with if, if it's because, mind you, if it's being transmitted to a satellite, that same data could be taken to list it on the board. You go up to the board and it shows you the names of people and their where they're crime stat five, crime stat four, yeah. whatever. That's cool. Cool. We're going to say this. You know, Pops. What, what they could do on those boards is uh, if they have sales, you know, mm. particularly maybe. Uh, Cousin Crows is having to say 20% on, off. <laughs> right. Um, you know, even even uh especially events, concerts mm. in the in the verse. Uh I mean it everything I mean it doesn't have to just be things of you know, war yeah. and battle, but yeah. it, it it could be things like that. Maybe even uh we could buy space mm. on there. Mm. On, I just the I just thought of that, like an org mm. could 
somehow buy uh, like a little their symbol mm. and like some words about who they are. Mm -hmm. Like people would be into that, I think. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I'd like to see things happen that happen that we go to the website for. So, like, like for example, Fortuna just went by. I would love to have seen stuff up yeah. there about Fortuna while that was going on. You know, the different seasonal things that we do. Something that comes up there on screen just to kind of let us know what's going on in the world, right? So I don't have to just necessarily go to the website to find out about the Chinese New Year. You know, they've got the right. envelopes and things up there and something telling me there. I don't know. There's a lot of cool things. Cal Roddy, Jay, would, you guys got anything? Yeah. Yeah. For me, like, you know, maybe not for these screens, but, um, you know, I guess initially it would be cool because we don't have like museums or anything mm -hmm. in the game yet. But, um, you know, in order to teach people some of the lore, like if, if the cinematics team could recreate some of these, uh, you know, like epic battles from the you know, past or, you know, incidents, like I would love to see like, you know, the security camera footage of like Keller's run when all the outlaws were chasing after this guy that, you know, shot up, uh, an advocacy agent, like stuff like that, mm -hmm. because yeah. it, it would convey, you know, the richness of this universe. Like this is stuff that happened. Like, you know, it would just be like a little short, like five minute thing, yeah. but it would give a lot more life to the universe and make people feel like, wow, I'm part of something, you know, much bigger than it being a game. They yeah. did, they did do a small version of that. Not as big as what you're talking about, but I'm thinking about, you know, in Crusader, the big wall, you know, the big yes. video wall. It gives you that whole history of Crusader and tells you about what they do there as far as building ships and stuff. That, yep. that is kind of a cool thing. And it would be nice to kind of find some, here's some background information about this place you're at, you know, something like that. Uh, like Hurston, how about yeah. some, some freaking negative welcome from the Hurston family? You know, right. when you come down to the hab or something to tell you to get the work, slave. You know, just something yeah. to come wow. up, you know. Or Paul Shelley's <laughs> Jump Town documentary. Something the like Jump that. Yeah. yeah, 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 something like that. That All would right. be cool. You know, I was going to... No, go ahead. No. Oh, well, no. I was just going to say um, that they also could use these to um, stream in their actual live stream. For ISC. Oh, for watching it. And, but and, right. and I, I do want to go to something that Jade said earlier about breaking the, the wall. It, bringing in real world, I can understand yeah. why for some people they want to keep it in context of the universe, right? Um, I agree with that. And, and, and I think yeah. that we don't want to come to 2023, you know. I, mm -hmm. I get it. I, I like. I, I get it. Exception for Citizen Con. Yeah, Citizen Con is the only reason why I'm saying because a way to assemble people to come together in the game. But I think that if you start bringing too much real world in it, it, it plus mm -hmm. it's just not going to look in place, you know. Now, no, what they could, could do. A, go ahead, go ahead, go ahead, Calroy. Oh, I was just going to say it could be a personal option if they were to, wanted to use via Mobi Glass or so versus using, you know, mm. a, a, a public screen. So if they wanted to watch ISC, they can pull up their Mobi on their Glass, own. So, yeah, something like that. That's, yeah. a, that's an alternative. Okay. Now I, I have an idea, and this would be right up Nate's alley. You, you know, if Nate wanted to do this. He could have a, a, a sitcom, <laughs> you know, that would be up on the screen and it would be showed every Thursday at eight o'clock. It's a bit sitcom. And, yeah. You know, okay. You and, do uh, TV show, TV it, show comes it, it, it on. Do that, yeah. You, know? you never know. Right. We could have uh we could have a, uh, what is it? Uh, what's the Tavarin's court, you know, something like that. Yeah. You know, yeah what, something mm -hmm. like that. Right. Okay. A whole lot of things yeah. could, be, could we, be done. We could do hoarders. <laughs> they have those shows, right? Um, you know, we get on Tuesdays, the uh, narrative team, there's like a show that's called Something Every Tuesday. Mm -hmm. There was another one that was called like Booty Call. Um, mm -hmm. There was another one. Yeah, I mean, they yeah. have these yeah. shows uh, that, you know, exist in the Star Citizen universe. But the, I think the thing that would be prohibitive is just the cinematics team's, you know, ban on well, time. Hey, Jade, how about this? How about that be something that, that, that community people could sign up for? I agree. And they they, give, they give them the guidelines. They give them the guidelines. Yeah. They give them the stuff, and all they have to do is put it together. It takes the work off of CIG, right? And it gives them straight props to the people who decide to throw that thing together, right? They can get I'd credits that. and everything. That'd be an alternative. I would, I'd love to be a host of Star Watch. Mm -hmm. yeah. Just saying, Star Watch. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> yeah. All right. Here's another familiar piece. Now I know y'all gonna say, "Oh my God, what do we do with this one?" But we see this all the time when we go to New Babbage. Hi, and welcome to New Babbage. I'm a ninth generation social protocol system 
designed and built right here in New Babbage. When I'm not managing complex urban logistics, I love meeting new people and learning interesting new things. Can I help? Okay. We've seen oh. Rowena Dooley in her other life, okay? <laughs> um, what, any thoughts about the hologram? I mean, it's, it's one of those things that once you've done it, you don't really go back to it too much because it doesn't change. Is right. this something oh. for, for broadcasting, you know, to folks that come to places? Is this something that, or is, I mean, maybe just unique to New Babbage too, but the, the, the hologram technology is something I see that could, it's pretty science fiction-y and I could see it being in other places. Any thoughts on what else they could do with this to make people return to it, use it? I'm mm. mission giver. There you go. Yeah. Um, but, okay, also... wait, 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 okay. Yeah, but we got mission givers in the game. Yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm not Isn't against Rita, that idea. Rita's a hologram. Rita at Grim Hex. Yeah. Rita with a bad leg? No, no, no. That, no. That's Rico. Oh, yeah. Oh, Rico. Oh, I'm sorry. Rita, oh, Rico, okay. Yeah. I'm sorry. Yes, yes, yes. And that Rita's one is. Rita's a mission giver. It's a hologram. Right. That's in the true. Game right now. Yeah. Yeah. I forgot about it. Yep. You're right. So these types of holograms have also, um, for a couple of months, I was thinking, why not, you know, let them integrate it into the new player experience? Mm. Or, you know, if someone is visiting a new location for the first time and they want to have a tour of the location, mm. you can, you know, you may not need to put in a whole bunch of motion capture, but they can say, okay, similar to how they may show, we saw a teaser of the newsletter sneak peek of how at ArcCorp they're showing the maps, <laughs> but I know possibly they can actually, if you wanted to get information on a particular building or what it does, et cetera, you can have, I you know, um, hologram just, uh, start at a, at a location, let's say, from the moment you, um, you docked in your, in your hangar, um, exited, and, you know, it, it, it'll only be, be visible to you, right? So many players can go through the same process without it being, or without you seeing too many Moby glasses or too many holograms. So if you were to, let's go back to the new player experience, um, you just start the game, for example, and you exit your hab, you can start the tutorial, you can take you through different places, different POIs in the city, or even, you know, allow you to do certain things within the city or th uh, within a particular location to be able to allow you to understand through verbal communication, what's what, mm. so. Yeah, I, 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 oh, I was gonna say, you know, citizen shenanigans in chat basically read my mind. I think it would be really cool. And I know this, people start crying about feature creep. If they hook this up, to voice recognition has become really, really good. Mm -hmm. Make it something like Alexa or Siri, where you'd ask a question about something in the star city of the universe. It queries using like something like GPT, chat GPT type uh, query of the Galactopedia and all the star citizen lore. You want to know about the Hornet? Well, she'll tell you about the Hornet, right? You want to know about, you know, um, the uh, Nick system, she'll tell you about it, right? And all that, because they have all that information, it's there in text form, which can then be converted, you know, from text, uh, text to voice. Like, it's just a matter of like hooking these things up. And then suddenly she goes from just having a few things that y you can, you know, interact with her to then being like literally the 30th century version of Siri. I was thinking yeah. about what we have in, what's, not, what's it called, Jade, not voice attack, but... Uh... Oh, what's the program? The people who make the voices. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. It's uh, H. You mean the yeah. HCS? Yeah, HCS, HCS voice stuff. Yeah. That it, uh -huh. that's in there now. You can ask about certain systems and ships, and you get all right. that uh, that information comes up. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. I was thinking it would be even more robust if CIG developed it. Um, you know where it was in game because, yeah. like, again, that's a third party app. We yeah. can do it, but it's a third party app. Wouldn't be so cool. If you walk by, you know, you're going to get your ship at New Babbage Interstar Spaceport and you hear somebody, you know, interacting with her, asking about something you didn't even know about. Like, yeah. and, and you're, now you stop by and like, oh, I didn't know that was a thing. Mm -hmm. You know, maybe somebody never heard of Sataball and she's talking about that. You know, it'd be cool. I like the idea, Cal Roddy, about the new player experience. I would love to see where, where she's standing. And maybe she says, while you're right. here, visit Wally's bar. She disappears and we see a hologram of Wally's bar spinning, you know, something like that, <laughs> you know, or, or if you, or yeah, or, va or visit Whammers, you know, just, just kind of like flashes of just different things that you can do there, you know, right. um, there, there could be all types of cool things. I mean, not even to be funny, but 
even if you want to go up there and say, what's the weather outside? You know what I mean? Because maybe if it's a windy day or something, you're ready to go out. I mean, it's all types of things, like Jade said, that, that you could query to the hologram. But I, I'm, again, I think these are great ideas for things that will make people, even the mission giver idea, things that will make people use it. Because right yeah. now, she's pretty sitting there, but once you've been there a couple of times and you heard a couple of bad jokes, you know, we don't really go back too much. Yeah, like in order to do that, all they'd have to do, and I mean, this is being done right now um, in other games and things. It's, you know, they just call Anna Dimitrio in to uh, read lines to clone her voice. And then yeah. she doesn't have to record all every them. single mm -hmm. response. Right. It just becomes a, another AI text, um, you know, to voice uh, thing. And they've become very, very, I use them all the time on the people's radio. Yeah. You can't tell that you're not hearing the human mm -hmm. uh, quite often. And, so, yeah. and, and not just that, it doesn't have to be just Anna. That's that's the new yeah, Babbage. Yeah. But like yeah, you said, we, yeah, because right, because just, it wouldn't take Babbage. a lot of work. Yeah, yeah right. It right, could right, be wouldn't. anybody. Right. Yeah. I think I think it's a great idea. I would love to see it happen in other places that technology be, you know, holograms. I get the whole thing, it being at Microtech, but I would love to see it in other places as well. Yeah. Okay, let's jump off to the next one here. This one's a little bit more difficult. Uh, and that's space stations. Um, now, these are unique, you know, the, the Lagrange points and places like that, even the orbital stations. What type of information could be broadcast at these locations? Is there anything? I mean, is it is it just enough to hear the humming and that's it? Or maybe you want to hear some, you know, elevator music playing in the background? Or is there some type of announcement, information? What could we could be broadcast into these places? So... I would really love to know what kind of stores they sell there without having to physically run through the whole go. place. <laughs> please, CIT, please give me a bill the board or something. Please. That's a good point because you never know whether there's a gun shop there, right? I mean, or mm -hmm. even though Stegman sign is up there, it says opening soon, right? I yeah. mean, we, yeah. we don't really know a lot of times, especially yeah. if it's a not familiar station, right? Nate, it might any be ideas? cool to hear like uh, real time, uh, you know, like say you log into Port Alisar and uh, four players have been killed for whatever reason in the last 30 minutes. It mm. gives you some kind of threat status. Mm. Like uh, the threat condition is currently Amber in uh, Crusader. So mm. you really, if you're a trader and maybe there's some trade, some maybe not as a robust, but some kind of supplemental trade information. Yeah. But you can check screens right there. And you're thinking, well, I'm gonna, I was going to do some trading in in Crusader, but maybe not. Maybe I'm going to check Hurston and see if their threat level's lower. Stuff like that might be cool. That's a great idea. Definitely billboards. <laughs> no, well, that's a great idea because uh, uh, what's the guy's name? Got Tony Z talked about how eventually there'll be like a heat map type of thing whenever there's a lot of activity going on somewhere. Yeah. So that could be translated. You're right to some type of announcement. You know, yeah. Uh, some generic announcement that basically says, you know. Currently, you know, the, the area is at level, you know, ye a yellow level right now, which means that there's piracy going on in the area or red, right. you know, something like that, you know. Especially the stations, that. as soon as you exit a jump point, mm -hmm. I want to know the status of the entire star system, if that's possible. Mm. Because I, if I recall, there will be um, stations near a jump point. Yes. So if, say, you exit a jump point and you want to have at least the preliminary information, such as the hype, hype map information, at least I can transmit that to my Moby Glass star map so that I can check it out at least. Mm. And they've talked about things like space weather, like, you know, solar flares mm -hmm. and things like that, radiation Ooh. affecting your ship. So yeah. we're better than on a space station to then get the space weather report yeah. for that, you know, current uh, time period. That's really cool, especially in places like Pyro, where we know there's a lot of a activity like that. Yeah. Maybe there's a certain period of time where they tell you it's much more dangerous to be in at that time. You know, yeah. our, yeah, you know, I, our research has like, told what's us. Yeah, Tyro's <clears throat> proton count and mm -hmm. yeah. flux, yeah. yeah. Or radiation levels. It could be a yeah, lot of exactly. different things that could be before, like you said, Nate departing from one of these places or, or Kyle Roddy, just pertinent information, you know. Well, you know, too, on. like uh, sightseeing spots around, like say like mm. uh, Damar's got the crash site that everyone's visiting now. Mm. Maybe if I'm specifically in Crusader, I can tap into some kind of information terminal system there and mm -hmm. see, like, are there people there right now? Mm -hmm. Or, like, what's going on there? Because I don't want to go down there and be <laughs> pirate, you know, mm -hmm. fodder. So <laughs> maybe stuff like system centric mm -hmm. uh, info stuff. Interesting. Okay. Cool. I like it. 
All right, we're gonna go back in the Wayback Machine here. For those of you all who have not been around for a while, I'm about to blow your mind. Your mind is going to be blown. <laughs> <clears throat> for those of us who remember when hangers worked, not only did hangers work, but there was also a certain flair that we had that worked. Let's see who remembers the Stellar Sonic jukebox. <laughs> I do. Oh, wow. Alrighty, who remembers that baby? Yes, I do. <laughs> oh yeah. Now I have a question on that. Yes, sir. Now is that personal, or does everybody in your hangar here? Well, hear we're, we're going to give you the background on it. We're going to tell you why that thing was cool. Mm. It was it was cool, then it started to be not so cool, then it disappeared. Mm. <laughs> anybody want to talk about it? Who remembers what you could do with it? Oh, you could load up your own MP3s. There was a folder <laughs> in your Star Citizen folder, mm -hmm. and you could you could put MP3s in there. And I loved it. Like you know, but this also was to answer Pop's question. <laughs> this was single player. The hangers you you technically couldn't. It's just you. Yeah, it was just you. I think didn't was it Jared that had some type of hack that he figured out to invite somebody. Yeah, some to people get in. They, he showed yeah. us the, there was a video. I don't know if he did it, but there was a video where somebody hacked and got their friends into a hand. Yeah, him yeah. and uh, Josh yeah. um, did it. No, so, But it wasn't something that was like supported by CIG. Right. It was just something that, you know, like they were able to do, but this was not intended for more than just you hearing it. Yeah. Mm. Fist and, and Nate, I'm going to throw this question to you guys because uh, I know Cal Roddy remembers this, but you know, one of the issues with this, people were so excited that they could play their own music, but it was cool because you were the only one hearing it hmm. from a licensing standpoint. So right. here comes the hurdle, right? You mm -hmm. want to bring all your friends over and listen mm -hmm. to your music and play it in the game. You can, <laughs> you can do it in Second Life. <laughs> I know. Right? In Second well, Life, you can. It's not a hurdle. I, it's I know. Not a hurdle. But my question becomes... Are there any issues in relation to licensing, playing other people's music it's, in, it's, in a I'm, game? You know what? Go ahead. Go ahead. I'm sorry. I think, I think it falls on the individual, actually. Yep. If, mm -hmm. I think if you want to go in and play your, say I load, like Jade said, I load my folder full of my songs mm -hmm. and I listen to them in my ship or I listen to them in my helmet or on this. If other people hear it, who cares? Um, but if, if, if you find out I, I, I pirated all the music, uh, who's first of all, uh, who's gonna, you know, I don't know. I think it should fall on same real life rules. It's like, okay. why would that be SIG's, uh, it, problem? It isn't well, no more than it is with Linden labs that make second life. Right. So, so what's right. the workaround? What's the it, workaround? Yeah. Liz, 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 uh, uh, I'll explain it. Yeah. Okay. So Linden labs doesn't, you know, have you put a bunch of, uh, MP3s into a folder. So that's what keeps them, you know, from being legally liable. What they do instead is they give you access to an open protocol for streaming, right? And so that jukebox, or maybe we'll, we'll just call it a radio instead, mm -hmm. would be able to bring up anybody's shoutcast streams. CIG has no, or CIG or Linden would have no uh, control over what's on those shoutcast streams and therefore is not liable because they're not the ones that are providing the content. They're just providing access to an open protocol. Yeah, which then carries forward the stuff we maybe were talking about earlier, where maybe you can show like citizen created content that has stuff that you would assume they have permissions to use. Mm -hmm. um, but if they didn't, it still wouldn't fall on SIG necessarily. Mm. Yeah. Maybe. Exactly. It it's, would just fall on whoever is providing the shoutcast stream. So it would be the individual who, you know, decided to to um, broadcast something, but it, it would more likely be the company, right? And so with Second Life, the companies that um, are recommended to, you know, do your, your streams through, they basically pay licensing fees. Yeah. So and, that, and, that's, it, and that was my question. It. Yeah. That was my question. Would CIG have to deal with any licensing issues? When it came that's, down to it, I mean, I hear the workaround. I hear the workaround for it. I'm just curious because I know, you know, if it's just you listening to music versus, but okay, Nick, give, I'll give an example. Nick's I mean, Cloud built we're, their we're, entire business model on exactly what we're talking about. Who did? 
mixed cloud you mixed can cloud, you yeah. can yeah you can you know you can do dj sets with licensed music you pay um a monthly fee that's what i'm saying you gotta pay a fee care of all, right so all cig would have to do is say if you want to do this we're going to charge you a monthly fee that then goes to uh mixed cloud to use their api and, and, and that's and, exactly and, what, and and that's what i was asking so it's not free so that's yeah, what i was they, asking or, or handle the licensing or or it's like youtube when you upload you you're saying you click a button that says i i am testifying that i as an individual have the rights to this music and and you know if you don't it goes directly to you because there's some one click legal thing in there that mm -hmm. takes the pressure off sig yeah that doesn't yeah. cost anybody any money mm -hmm. but if for some reason some company wanted to uh, uh you know attack you you, you they would be legally covered with some thing that that I clicked as an individual that said I am taking full responsibility. Okay. okay. Yeah. Like, then you'd have, to, you'd have to filter it too for like inappropriate content stuff. So they why have... I brought up Mixcloud is because it, in the case of of them, they basically work with every um, performance rights organization mm -hmm. and record label um, imaginable to then obtain the licensing okay. uh, of all that music. So you know most people aren't going to be. I don't think most people are going to be you know, creating their own music like Pops and Fist or I do or mm -hmm. other, other people, they're going to be playing music they're familiar with, which is then going to fall under copyright music. So the, the workaround to that, like literally is it's a company that specializes in clearing that stuff okay. uh, to allow you to do it, of course, for a small fee, but still. Okay. And that was, yeah. and that was my question. Would CIG have to do something to allow people to be able to play their, to broadcast their music, not play it for themselves, but to broadcast music in the game? Yeah, they just have to get with, you know, Nextcloud mm -hmm. and have like an use an API okay. or something to give access to, um, you know, their system within the game or do the second life route and just say, hey, look, we're giving you access to an open protocol. What you choose to do with it is your responsibility. We're not legally liable for any of this. Mm. My thing is, though, with that being said about Mixcloud, I got to I'm, I'm trying to find out because. I kind of tapped into a little bit of the laws, a little bit I looked into it, but um, as far as the laws, because um, music laws are, are very vague when you hear it um, do, do certain things. But um, <laughs> I would like to know how mixed cloud is their deal is between the record companies, because are they getting a percentage or something like that? Because that's what I'm thinking that would have to come off of as, as a deal between CIG if they do something like that. So, so the way I, I read an interview with uh, the creator of Mixcloud, I, I don't have the link, mm -hmm. unfortunately, right? but basically, you know, what they do is they, they do what you or I would have to do on our own, right? Like we could use copywritten music if we got in touch with the people who own the license and paid them a, either a percentage or like, you know, a buyout, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. um, they they do that for like whole catalogs mm -hmm. and then like on a per use basis for things that are more obscure, right? And so then that way everybody gets paid. The artists get paid, the labels get paid, um, the DJs, you know, can can you know, promote their, their sets mm -hmm. and not have to worry about getting sued. Mm -hmm. And yeah, it's, okay. it's pretty much their business model. All right, cool. All right. Well, good conversation. I hope they bring the jukebox back because I thought it was a lot of fun. It was very, very cool. And uh, again, like Jay, we said earlier, they bring stuff in, right? They take it out, yep. but it lets you know the direction <laughs> of stuff that they're thinking about. Yeah. I have one uh, question on the yeah, pops. The, the lights on it, because I, 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 lo I love lights. Uh -huh. Did the, uh, were the lights just static or did they move no to no the no to the music to it the went to the music yeah it actually went yeah, to, the to the music yep. yeah yeah it was very right, cool, cool. Yeah, it was if you cool. remember griff there was another jukebox that was in the game in the, the old social module where yep. we had area 18 and g-lock yep. you know, there were only two songs on it, <laughs> it, was but it. again it, it gives you an indication of like what they kind of you right. know imagined having yeah. but pops this jukebox you could put wherever you wanted to in your hanger you dropped it wherever mm -hmm. you wanted to which was which was nice and like i said you could put your own your own music in it and just or you could listen to whatever you wanted to let me jump to the next area here clubs and this is a little bit different than the bars because uh, mm. we're starting to move toward the other part of the conversation here um as you guys know oasis and um what's the other one oasis in the cove are both uh, in the area where wally's is wally's kind of dominates it but these are like smaller more intimate clubs 
Uh, I, some of us have used this for Machinima before. Most of the times, these places are empty. They got some cool seats sitting right outside of them and stuff, but most of the time, there's nobody in these clubs. Um, ideas, you know, of what could bring people to these locations in the game. Any ideas or suggestions? Yeah, well, they could do, you know, in-game stars. Mm -hmm. You know, I mean, uh, a person that they, they have made up mm -hmm. and um, they're they're performing. Okay. Um, they could have contests. Uh, hopefully when they get the emotes mm -hmm. together, you know, uh, people uh, can come in and have dance contests um, at them. Yeah, that's what I was getting ready to say. <laughs> they, 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 their emotes have to get on point. <laughs> right? right. <laughs> before they even think about the clubs but you don't, you don't want to you know, do the, the chicken thing and all the other stuff you're not right. into that no okay yeah. well. emotes have to get on point <laughs> um yeah I, I would i mean you know the variety of music would need to become more um of a thing um to be honest you know um as, as we just heard you know that style of music is it's cool and all but you know you need to be you got to think about certain to to what's current you know what's 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 on people's playlists you know as far as that you know some things like that that'll drive people in there continuously you know because like back in the day when you know djs um well not back in the day but even still today excuse me you know djs they would listen to what's current and they would also listen to you know what's current in each um area you know certain things like down south versus up north east coast west coast certain things like that you know so okay uh, I, when i okay. Sorry, when i when i look at like a place like this i'm thinking a lot of people maybe there's some way like way to use this space like maybe this is going way out there mm -hmm. but maybe you go into a dance like this specific dance room here and if you dance it benefits your avatar somehow like yeah. That's going out on a limb, but it's a reason to go there. It's a reason to hear the music. It's a reason to socially interact or be there with other players to do Buffs. something that helps you. How about how about a reputation of something that that works into the level of like charisma, mm. right? Yes. Right. It says that if you've gone in the club and danced, mm. it says that if you've bought a couple of drinks from the bar, when you go to the bartender, mm. he he happens to tell you some mission giver information, right? Right. Mm. You know, like we were talking about, the, we were joking around about this the other day, but we were serious. We were talking about people picking up garbage and, and, and throwing garbage away. Does that right. give you reputation with that particular in New Babbage or in, in Lorville so that when I'm doing certain things, maybe when I go to that, turn around to that barista, that barista, maybe there's something else that pops up other than what do you want to drink? Maybe there's something that says, with, you know, information because I cleaned up around that particular area. You know what I mean? Or I threw my bottle away. Versus if I'm a garbage guy, if I throw stuff on the ground all the time, I get a real small negative that's added to my reputation for, for that particular area. And I never get to see that information thing that pops up under that drink, right? So dancing, because those of us who played Star, played Star Wars Galaxies, remember when you went to the cantina and you danced, that was a way to buff yourself, actually. I'm not saying yeah. we should buff, but sure, why not have something in the reputation? Or like build endurance. Yeah, That's yeah. exactly what I was going to say, go. right? Because yeah. they've already talked about that at yeah. CitizenCon. So, like, if you can dance mm -hmm. for 24 hours, and I've done it, <laughs> um, <laughs> then, you know, you're obviously going to have better leg muscles, right? right. So, like, it, maybe you don't have to run everywhere. Maybe you, you know, or maybe if you want to run everywhere, you got to go there to dance to, like, you know, build up. Yeah. Put up those leg muscles. The, the only other thing I would say about this is, uh, you know, kind of going on to what, what uh, Fizz said, um, I wouldn't necessarily want them to, like, have to, you know, make everything, like, super current because mm -hmm. it is, you know, 930 years in the future. But what I would like in terms of variety is if you had different music for different, you know, like, I don't know, different events or different nights, then it would be something different. Where if yeah. you go to there now, you hear one song looping. Yeah. But you know, I, I think it would be cool. Like you know, if you had a schedule, maybe on one of those screens, and you saw, okay, this DJ plays this type of music. That's what's going to be playing there. Then yeah. maybe then that's something you and your friends like. So you'll go over there. You, you want to hear space hip hop. You yeah. want to go over and hear. Tuesday you know, is and ta uh, ta uh, yeah, Tavar and Tango Night or something. Yeah, yeah, yeah exactly. <laughs> Exactly. Yeah. So just make it more mm -hmm. unique. Yeah. I would say, you know, to Fist's point, I would say, you know, and this is before we get to DJing, I was going to say when it comes to the bars and to the clubs, that that music should remain within context of wherever you're at. 
right? Yeah. I yeah. think I think those are the things that CIG could create. And or or again, if we do bring it out to community people to produce it, there's some certain guidelines of what you need to produce, the type of music you're submitting. Uh, we kind of know that these different uh, landing zones and spaces all kind of have their feel. The, the, uh, Pedro and them are creating music in Zanelli. They're creating music to fit into where those areas are. So it could be challenging for artists to do that. Now, what I would say, we're going to talk about this next other than clubs is Wally's. Now, Wally's, I'm so sick of hearing this song. It was so cool the first time it. I heard it, but I'm so sick of hearing this song. It's a good um, remix. Yeah, it's a Thank good you. remix. Um, here's my thing. Uh, and we're going to talk about the DJing. Once we get to the DJing area, like this could be the common music where there's like a rotation of stuff that happens here, but I would love to see a DJ night because they yeah. do have a DJ booth here. Yeah, if you look up there, you can see it. Exactly. Speaking of the devil, there it is, mm -hmm. right? So yes. to be able to say that, you know, tonight is, you know, Pops in Space is spinning on Friday night, you know, and that's Pops quote unquote up there. He ain't up there, but he's up there, right? And we hear his mix yeah. for that particular time. What do you guys think you about submit, DJ? You could submit a mix, mm -hmm. but you know, one thing back, back to, to bring it into people, you could unlock, um, you know, according to how much time you spend on the dance floor, you could unlock um, dance moves as the yeah. more time mm. you spend. Oh, yeah. Mm. Mm. See that, that's, yeah, that would be great. People would definitely want to do that stuff. Yeah. That's a cool Preach. idea, Pops. Good Preach idea, Pops. Good idea. Kel Roddy, somebody put in chat that they want to come, see you come out and do break dancing. I don't know if you saw that earlier. Uh, I saw that. <laughs> I'd be willing, but I not yet. <laughs> Ooh, bust out that cardboard. All right. <laughs> yeah. Um, you know, back in the day, before we had television, <laughs> broadcast used to be broadcast, radio broadcasts of music and stuff would be often nationwide. You had brought from New York across to LA. It was like, it wasn't just localized, right? Right now, everything's so localized. Big names in particular, right? Um, you know, it'd be interesting to see if they could create situations like this where like if you were spinning or doing a DJ mix at, um, at, at uh, New Babbage, that there would be a channel somewhere or other when I'm on my 890 that I could tune in and watch that DJ set or watch that whatever that's going on, that karaoke thing. Because I've been noticing they got cameras in a lot of places in the game, these little security mm -hmm. cameras everywhere. It would be cool to be able to tune in on certain events and see certain things. I know it's pretty ambitious, but you okay. know, the project is ambitious. So you say about tuning in. Now we go back to the the big screen we saw at uh, Crusader. Mm -hmm. Let's say, like you said, somebody's doing a live set, and you know they CIG somehow um, taps into your live feed. You know they have you mm -hmm. um, with your camera set or whatever. As, and but you can't. The fidelity of the music is not going to be as good as if you were there. So mm. maybe that could be something that would, you know, people folks would be like, okay, what's going on on this screen? Mm -hmm. I hear what's going on. I see a lot of people over there. Mm -hmm. Okay, let's hop on see our what's ship. Going on. Let's go over there to New Babbage. Yeah. You know, parties over here kind of a thing. Yeah. You know. Yeah. Could you imagine doing this kind of thing for like New Year's Eve? Yeah. You know, like <laughs> that would be like, become like a, you know, oh, a big thing. The, go travel to Wally's or whatever the the hot spot is to be with a lot of people. Absolutely. I mean, there, I it, I think that there's a lot of room here. I know the only thing that we've been told about Wally's bar again is that whole piece about um, you know, one of the bartenders is going to be like an informant where you're going to be able to get information. Eddie Parr. Yeah, but I would love to see some other reasons. Again, this is all about how can broadcasting be used to make us more immersed. And to draw us into the game in more in, in social ways and activity ways and stuff, you know. So I know Jay mentioned the drunken tour mm -hmm. um, earlier mm -hmm. that she takes people down uh, to to the different bars. Right now, I, I would think or, or hope that um, is there any lore attached to the bars that people would have a reason um, for the tours. Uh, Maybe if there's something that particularly happened there, maybe a, uh, a murder happened there 50 years ago or or something like that to uh, have people 
um, go to the bar. I don't know if there's lore no, around a, bars. Is, is there Jade? Is yeah. there lore about some of the bars? Yeah, there's 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 M &B's hella got lore one, about think, right? uh, Wally's right here, right? Mm -hmm. So like Wally's at uh, New Babbage in, in general is known as being like the party capital of the Stanton system. It's also known for the place where you get party drugs. And it's also known as a place where Sadaball players have gotten into trouble right. for having uh, a little bit too much of a party there. Parties, yep. So, so there's that. There's that. also something uh, even more to the point of like uh, having like a, a drunken tour. There's a, a day called Traveler's Day, which is like a holiday in the Star Citizen universe. And I could see, you know, like, what do we do for like you know, things like the 4th of July? You know, we, we have cookouts, people drink, right? So I could see some people would observe Traveler's Day by just going on a drunken tour, you mm -hmm. know? So, yeah. Okay. So... There was one other thing that I was actually thinking about when Griff used the word jaw, because when it comes to having a bad reputation, right, that that, that attracts many different um, players, especially mm -hmm. bounty hunters. Now, in the case of DJing in Wally's Bar, um, as a DJ, or if you have some kind of mission to play a, a certain combination of music, that can ha have a probability of drawing certain mission givers or certain persons of interest at a certain time um, to a particular location, or even um, mass reputation buildup. You play the right amount of music, you can actually attract or build a reputation with persons indirectly that you can actually work with. Or even, once again, pull in or attract persons of interest at that bar that you can actually use to get information from, or even tag if, you're, if they're an NPC bounty or anything like that. So broadcasting music, once you play the right music, it could be through some of the minigame, can be as a, a, a way to mass um build your um your reputation as opposed to doing a particular mission for one person and building reputation for a single um faction mm. no okay okay all right cool all right we're gonna move it right along because it's getting late in the tooth here let's talk about <clears throat> this this is the one ship that we have heard discussions and conversations about we even brought it up earlier the mako uh, some people used to call it the news van was the nickname that it was given. And a lot of people bought it. Uh, I remember particularly our friends at Relay were very excited about this because they were running their news, uh, INN news uh, station. Uh, people bought this because they wanted to be able to cover what was going on in the verse, covering battles, things of that nature. Uh, but one of the other things I want to suggest about this is the idea of events and reconnaissance. Um, you guys got any thoughts about that? I'm going to EE e. first over there, EE e. Studios. Nate, any ideas about this being used? I mean, maybe even for Machinima, you know, if this, if this camera's flexible enough, uh, I don't know how much detail they've, whether it's in its final state or whether they need to iterate it more to get more out of it, because it's not completely there, but it does work in the Mako. Yeah, well, this particular ship, I think, actually having, having explored a lot of ships for camera platforms in mm -hmm. the game for Machinima, this is actually one of the worst ones mm -hmm. because it's very wonky. Mm -hmm. um, the Ares, Inferno, and Ion are actually the most stable, smooth, mm -hmm. weighty for, for camera ships. Nice. Um, and this one, I was thinking sort of what we said earlier where – you know, you can broadcast from a Mako and it will go live and people can F11 and see who's live and watch your stream from the Mako. In terms of reconnaissance, mm -hmm. I, 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 I'm not sure I see it being much different than how it would be used for an in-game broadcasting thing. Mm -hmm. um, maybe if I hear the others what the others say about that, it might give me some ideas. But I personally don't think the Mako is, a, is the best camera ship uh, as it's balanced out right now. Mm -hmm. The way it flies yeah does anybody else mess with this with the mako yeah yeah i own two of them one for me and one for the people's radio news mm -hmm. um and i agree as it is right now it, it is not the greatest camera ship uh but i see the potential for you know what they want to do with it and having that uh gimbaled camera there's a lot of potential they could do with that mm -hmm. um you know giving it adjustable zoom mm -hmm. there's so many things that you know this ship could shine mm -hmm. it just hasn't gotten the treatment Not it's really yet. a placeholder right now mm -hmm. so i don't i don't judge it by what it is now i'm gonna judge it by what it'll be when they put the mechanic in mm -hmm. yeah and again a um, lot of people bought it because they're excited about the possibilities of what this ship will do you know yeah, yeah. i would like to see hopefully you know, I don't know how far 
the zoom capabilities are on this ship but i would assume that being that this is recording battles you'd have to be at a great distance you know because you you know of course you don't want to become collateral damage so with that being said if it could have a great zoom with fidelity then i mean you're talking about spy wow i mean that's capabilities of uh being able to sell information um endless possibilities there again yeah. you know if it works see my, my piece about this ship is being able to do things in real time like right now you can do stuff and record it but outside i'm talking about for it to be able to broadcast real-time information to folk you know would right. be interesting to me the the, the the terrapin was showing receiving transmissions of a type right but i this is where i'm talking about doing a live feed from some place that battles and stuff is one thing right don't get me wrong for news coverage mm -hmm. like you said uh, but I was thinking about if there is a uh, reconnaissance that needs to be done, you know, uh, land a sucker somewhere off in the distance, yeah. you can zoom in with the camera and your, your org can see what's going, you know, how many ships are there and blah, 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 things of that nature. I'm just curious. That's real time information being pumped into them. I just got an idea because it's such a vulnerable ship. Mm -hmm. Uh, that makes it that balances out if you give it the ability to have night vision or infrared mm. imagery as well. Mm. So not now I'm flying at a black hole in Hurston where mm. I can't, no one can see anything, mm -hmm. but I have this super zoom and I can see like it's daytime and wow. I can pinpoint people on the ground even. Ooh, that's but a cool I gotta, idea. But I might have to get close. Yeah. So stuff like that might be good for recon. I love that being able to see heat signatures thing or something like that. I think that would be pretty cool. Yeah. Yeah, for it looking in for red. That would be great. Mm -hmm. That would be yeah. cool. definitely. Yeah. All right, CIG, you heard it. Natronics threw it out there. Send them a check if you make it. All right. Uh, <laughs> uh, okay, very cool. Um, let me do another old uh, oldie but goodie. Some of you guys may remember this. Let's take a look. Oh, that's the wrong thing. Where is it? Here it is. On tonight's Empire Report, a shocking vid has come out of the Corel system. In it, a prisoner on low is seen being beaten by police. Who took the vid? And how did it get out? The victim's family and low officials both want to know. Can people be too happy? That seems to be the question Crusader Industries is asking with the introduction of luxury liners equipped with the new exuberant respiration systems. We talked to our very own Jillian Spratt to learn what it was like to be one of the first passengers on board. With Terra's Settlement Day Festival shaping up to be the event of the year, we are looking at some major traffic hitting the entire system. We'll take a look at which jump points will be hit the hardest and what you can do to be prepared. All that and more on the next Empire Report at 2200 SET. Okay, <laughs> Jason, this is before my time. <laughs> what was the, that? The Empire Report. They used to put mm. these out with uh, around the verse, ATV. ATV would open up and then this would come on and they would do these reports of stuff that was quote unquote going on in the verse. They did it for several episodes and I think they had a total of four hosts. These two were the first two and then they added another woman and another guy uh, and then they stopped doing them. Uh, but INN, the Independent News Network, they later, not Independent News Network, Interstellar News Network, or whatever, they kind of did their thing, like kind of maybe inspired by this. But CIG used to put this out, right? And this is before we had the verse, before we had <laughs> all this stuff. This is back when we only had Port Olisar. They were putting these things out. So my question is, how do you feel about CIG using a medium like this? Like this, they have, the, this is their Empire Report, uh, their own news thing that comes up on the screens, giving these news briefings of stuff that's going on. Can I take it? Sure. All right. So uh, there's things I like about this and things I do not like. I've, I've never seen this until today. So, um, but I, I love the idea, right? Mm -hmm. I love that they would, you know, this was like a proof of concept, I think, for mm -hmm. what they want to do um, in the future, right? And maybe this is the kind of content we see on the screens. What I don't like is that they're using, you know, people that work for CIG. Like, I think it would it would be much better if these were, you know, these were people in the game, like characters in the game um, that are animated. And I don't know 
all of what would be involved with, you know, doing the animation or if they could just do something where their faces were animated by voice. I know that's, mm -hmm. you know, that's something that some, some, um, that's a tech that's out there so that they would have to have like the cinematics team, you know, do each one of these, but they could just feed them audio mm -hmm. and, and they would be animated so that they could do this and it's scalable and they could create one, you know, every week or day or whatever they wanted to do. I love the idea of it. I just think that it, this was way too soon, um, but it was probably something back then for people to watch because there was, was no game. Let me put this way. This was pre mocap days. Okay. Okay. So I think your point is, and I, listen, I have no problem with them mocapping it. They paid all that money for that studio. As yeah. far as I'm concerned, they could hire actors to come in and do all this stuff, not not with their faces, but do the mocap and right. then put the animation over it. You know what I mean? That yeah, I, create I those characters it. in verse, like you said, create yeah. some news people characters in verse that we all get to know who they are, like we do with our regular news. But I would love to see them mocap it. I think that would be like, get the money out of the studio as far to, as I'm concerned. do the mocap now. Like, we, we, they don't have to. to. a point where it could be animated just based on you know like like i said just based on audio and then that makes it scalable because imagine having to pay all those actors to come in to like every week do a new report no 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 no, and, not every week the lore you could you could scale those stories out over a period of time you know okay. what i mean based on stuff that's going on. i get what you're saying though you're right you yeah. could just do audio only but i'm saying i would i'm saying this mm -hmm. they got a big old studio to, <laughs> to yeah. use, and, and my yeah. attitude is use that sucker yep. to the fullest degree you know what i mean they ain't got to rent one like they did back in the day it's their studio and listen save some money i agree you know but, but i agree with you 100 percent. i think create some characters in game that we know who they are put some voices to it i think it'd be great you know? yeah, anybody else got any thoughts on that one it'd be cool if they let zark did it or yeah Zark's Ah, there you go. Yeah, I was about to say there that. you go. Thank you. Diabolical, thank you again for the 100 bits uh, earlier. Sorry we missed that. And Zarlon, yeah. thank you for the follow too. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Yeah. I'm surprised that most of you guys, Calrod, you've seen these before, right? Empire yes, Report? Yes, I have. Wow. Yeah, right. Okay. All right. Nate, had you seen these before? I hold no, I had no idea what this was. <laughs> Just like, I was like, what is this? <laughs> okay. You got to be a dinosaur in order to remember this stuff. This stuff goes I too far back. Yeah, and I get that it's old, but I don't like. I think you got to choose in-game characters. Mm -hmm. uh, you can't real. make real people. Agreed. Yeah, agreed. And again, this was just for ATV. You know, that's what this right. was about back in the day. Okay, all right, we're almost there, gang. Uh, I want to hit on this very quickly. Just these few items here: developer creations, things that CIG could do, um, broadcasting about dynamic events. I mentioned earlier about on Invictus. They do broadcast where the fleet is. We see that on the screens, letting us know where the fleet is moving, things like that. Same thing, which is a public announcement when they do that. But I want to ask you guys about this bottom one, unknown transmissions. Could these things be ways for us to expand into the verse? You know, um, maybe you go into some system, because we, we, we all know there's supposed to be a lot of systems, and some of them are, you know, we know it's there. But we also know CIG could put some stuff in that we're not expecting. Um, what could what could that lead to finding unknown transmissions in the game? And unknown transmissions could be anything from an unknown pirate base to something that's yeah. alien. Well, could thoughts? it be tied into, I know they said when you go through the wormhole, there's going to be openings that you, that you can uh, go through that are hidden. Maybe it's uh, maybe you're coming. Maybe you're going through a worm, and you pick up a transmission, and uh, you know it leads you to one of those openings. I don't know if I want to look at it from a navigational standpoint, pops. Mm -hmm. I'm referring okay. more from communications. Yeah. Uh, communications. You know, it'd, be re it'd be really neat if. So one thing I really liked as a kid was the movie The Abyss, and at the mm. uh, spoiler alert, at the bottom of the <laughs> deepest trench, there's aliens. Uh, <laughs> So I just ruined that movie for some people. <laughs> but like, what if there was some super rare, hard to find, but strange transmissions from the highest, most enlightened race that exists in the verse that nobody knows about? Mm -hmm. And like that led to super secret Easter eggs or like tied in things behind the mm -hmm. scenes that okay. you only could get if you actually discovered these strange transmissions in like some cloud somewhere or at a certain outpost uh -huh. where like the mag like the vortexes were stronger. I don't know. That'd be super kind of spooky, mm. but really interesting. And it would be something that hardcore like explorers would really want to try to find. And then you'd have to work together because it'd be so rare 
that explorers would have to communicate with each other about what they found to build this like super secret narrative about mm. this enlightened super enlightened race mm. yeah, maybe it's like a maybe it's like a, a pico reading poetry somebody said <laughs> wow, i got a great okay. i got a great idea that's along similar lines to that but it would involve and you know there's this this colony ship that disappeared called the artemis right, right. Mm. now imagine that I think it was like 2263 was when it left Earth. Those transmissions are going through space. Mm. They, mm. They now they're 930 years mm. out. And you're now picking up transmissions that little bits and pieces that you'd have to get with other players that picked up other bits and pieces mm. that then assemble what really happened at Artemis. You bring it into the ICC, the Imperial Cartography Center, and then now they've located it and you all get lots of money and rep with you know the yeah. ice you see yeah i yeah, just imagine flying around doing something else and then you start getting this weird transmission coming through on your screen yeah because you happen to cross to one that of area. these points that would be super exciting and, and that's what i'm talking about because you know a lot of times we we think that we, i think by default we think that because they've named these six races and we've got a map with everything there that we think that that's it but right. we don't know what CIG may place into the game. Maybe there is something that we haven't seen or something that, like you said, someone discovers and stumbles upon, right? Mm -hmm. So again, those transmissions could be, you happen to, your radio lights up or something comes up because you got close within a certain secret pirate base or something that's in a nebula uh, or alien transmissions, a whole types of stuff that they could do with this whole thing, you know? So. There was another thing that I was wondering about because there are a, a, a good bit of information that we have that I sometimes wonder if in the end uh, we'll continue to know. Um, for example, uh, let's say the service beacons that we have that players fire off. Um, who knows then that later on we may not get the exact amount of information when that service beacon is fired off, um, depending on if we are outside of Pyro. Um, do we get to know all that information such as the player's name? Or even if a player dies and they don't after a particular period of time, they don't go back to retrieve that their their own imprint. Um, maybe that um that corpse can actually intrinsically passively fire off um, some kind of transmission around a, a localized area. So if a player is flying around, they may pick that up and they may find the player's body after a particular period of time mm. because it's remained un unclaimed. So these types of you know smaller things. If a player is flying around, a ship can be destroyed. And after a period of time, if the player doesn't go back to their own ship, it starts to fire off a ping because it's now unclaimed um, now. So it can well, that, actually be picked up. That made me think about in aviation, there's a thing called ELT, Emergency Locator Transmitter. Mm. Whenever an aircraft crashes, enough G-force will set this thing off. Right, right. So, you know, finding derelicts can be difficult right now but maybe if you fly within a certain range you start getting that beep, 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 beep. Mm -hmm. and the closer you get it's like marco polo the closer you get the louder it gets and then maybe you find the derelict yeah stuff like that might be cool yeah elts would be cool thank you reload for the five subs i talked about you earlier in the show in case you weren't here <laughs> um i think that's a great idea um yeah, again, there's a lot, lot of possibilities, right? With these transmissions, stumbling across stuff, running across, or certain ships, like uh, Jade, you mentioned earlier, the Herald, the MSR, that could actually deliberately go out to try and search and find these transmissions as well. And some of the science ships yeah. as well, you know, <clears throat> the, the was it the Expanse, whatever the other, the other ships are, we could come up with some other ideas for that. Okay, let's change gears real quick and uh, talk about commercials. Um, we talked about this stuff. This is things that commu the community could create. And we've seen uh, commercials. Of, in fact, uh, last year, year before, CIG encouraged community folks to put commercials. They had, they had like 35 commercials that they ran during the Citizen Con. Uh, and, and there are still people who are producing them. I and one of the ones that we really enjoy watching is uh, Wicked Wookie. Wicked Wookie does this whole, well, I'll just play it and I think you'll get it. <laughs> Good morning, Stanton. This is Scooter coming to you from the beautiful Brio's Breaker Yard on Damer. Now looky here. Today we got the ships of ships boat, the Arger Carger. Now I know I don't have to tell you how badass this ship is, but I'm going to anyways. It's got an off-road brush guard. It's got KC lights. 
It's a single seater, just like the Razor or the M50. But this is better because it's got Lamborghini doors. Ooh, wait, look at that scissor in action. Now look at here. That there is VTOL landing gear with skis. You can take the whole family for a ride down the slopes of Microtech. Fun for the whole family. And the Arter Carter ain't got one, but two airlocks. Plus a high performance ramp to get in all your valuables. And she ain't limited to hauling shows Carter. No, sir. This ship is very versatile. It can be a mobile shelter, a food space truck, weapons cache, mobile pet groomer, or you can just haul it around your friends. Hell, you put some shag carpet and a lava lamp in this old girl and you got yourself a shagging wagon. Hey, mama. And if you buy the old Arger Carter today, I'm gonna throw in an Anvil Carrick for free. You just come on down to Brio's Break Yard and you see me, Skeeter Tell Skeeter sent you. Y'all have a good evening. Woo! All sales are final. Scooter ship sales is not responsible for any ski related injuries or dismemberments. And Volcaric may or may not be stolen. If the Argo Cargo is a rockin', don't come a knockin'. <laughs> okay. So there's a little humor there. Um, do you think that little videos like this would be things that the community content creators could make to submit? And because if you notice, uh, Disco's been really showing off these commercials now on, on, on SCL mm. as breakpoints or as an ISC. No, SCL. He doesn't want SCL. Do you think they can incorporate these type of things into the game? I do, but if, like you, you said, they'd have to be submitted, sort of like, you know, make Review. sure they're, mm -hmm. yeah, like they did with the, like you said, they, with the Citizen Con when they showed the commercials. I think the community would like it. I, someone made a comment they wouldn't want it forced in their MFD. I don't think these things should be forced on people. I mm -hmm. think they should just be like playing in the background or you right. can choose to go in and watch them if you want. But uh, I think it's a good idea. Yeah, yeah, we are, we're not talking about forced broadcasting by any means. I'm saying if you're sitting in the bar at G Lock and, you know, this pops up as a commercial, you know what I mean? Just random type of thing. You know, we're not talking about yeah. something that you have to look at, but, right. <laughs> but something that community people can contribute to kind of fill out the verse even more. And not to be funny, take some pressure off of CIG because there are plenty yes. of people that love doing this stuff, you know, and putting it out someplace yeah. other than YouTube. We're going to say pops. Yeah, I think um, I think it should be something that should be continued on once once the game comes out. All the people that you know, the content creators, um, get a chance to keep doing what they're doing as they you know evolve their craft and and make it better. Mm -hmm. And to me, uh, the people that get to do music, uh, these types of things, and when the word gets out in the gaming community that you can actually do something and it's in the game. I think that would drive people to the game, mm -hmm. you know, that you can actually become a part of it, you know, make a theme song for, for someplace out there that they would allow us to do. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. I think that would drive a lot of people to the game just to be a part of the game. What other, what other game, you know, would allow so many people to do that. Mm -hmm. okay. I, I really think that they set up the model for this when they did the call for commercials for CitizenCon. Mm -hmm. um, you know, if they if they give specific parameters, like we'd like you to make a commercial for one of the many organizations or corporations that are in the Star Citizen universe, right? So mm -hmm. that that right there kind of limits yep. the scope, right. and and it, it makes it so that it conforms to the lore. Right. And then you know, there's only a limited amount of people who. Um, this appeals to as far as creating it, right? Mm -hmm. So I don't feel like they'd get overwhelmed, at least in the near term, maybe further down the line, there'll be way more players and so way more content to filter through. But I, I like this and I, I think this is something they probably absolutely want to do mm -hmm. uh, just based on, you know, like what um, Jared's doing with um, Star Citizen Life. Mm -hmm. So yeah. Okay. All right. And last but not least, let's talk about orgs because uh, uh, EE Studios, I know you guys have done some stuff. Um, and some things are just, you know, content creators, people who are artists, and then there are things that really people have done advertising for their orgs. And I know we alluded to that a little bit earlier about org information popping up. Let's take a look at this one.
It's just another night in the Stanton system. As the verse swarms with mischief. <laughs> and romance. But despite the going on of a diverse world, the members of Elite Expeditionary remain steadfast in the swift delivery of justice. Reaper 1, wheels up. Reaper flight, you are cleared to walk in. While some seek love upon the polished decks of a luxury voyager, fugitives toil and tumble in a white-knuckle fight of their lives. <laughs> And as the desire for a tender touch swells with promise, the cold, hard hammer of law and order strikes down with vengeance upon the wicked. No matter what the verse might yield for its many folk, if you're a member of a lead expeditionary, every night ends with a bang. <laughs> okay. <laughs> That was great. It's good stuff, right? Good stuff. That was a surprise. Uh, yeah, well, I thought, it, thought I'd surprise you. Yeah, there you go. Um, yeah, I mean, again, this was both entertaining to watch, but it was also a promo for an org, right? And it served yeah. two purposes, which was really kind of cool. And it also is a way... Now, I know that might be difficult because some orgs may say, well, we don't have anybody to make armor cinemas for us. You know, that, that could be another sad part to it, right? Uh, but then there are people who could say, hey, we want one made. We want to get somebody to make a video for us to have it submitted as well. Yeah, there's people that actually will, like, make you one mm -hmm. uh, that are out there. Yep. So, yeah. Yep, absolutely. Yeah. Well, maybe there's a channel, yeah, if I'm looking for an org, maybe I can go to a channel in the game and watch org ads. Mm -hmm. But they have, again, like Jay was saying earlier, there's, there's rules. Like, mm -hmm. it can't be longer than a minute it, mm -hmm. and this, this and that. And so SIG will screen that and then post it. Mm -hmm. Because I know th these commercials, this is where I started making machinimas with these commercials. Mm -hmm. These commercials got us a lot of interested players. Mm -hmm. So they people, super good. <laughs> people want to see this stuff and they, they are, they want to look for orgs. And they, and when I was looking for orgs initially, I would watch videos. Mm. Um, because who's to say what any org is without being in the org, you know? Yeah. So yeah, I and think it'd be cool. And I also think that something like this, uh, if an org has good aff affiliation, um, let's say a reputation comes in that allows an org to tie its faction affiliations with a particular faction, right? Let's say yeah. um, they're tied with Hurston or even Orison or even Crusader Security. Um, depending on, on the amount of persons who join or even look at the ads, they can actually gain or generate passive income because the, um, the NPCs or the NPC factions know that, okay, these orgs are gathering in um, these kinds of persons who most likely are affiliated with them and by extension crusader security so that actually increases the ability for security um the ability for crusader to have a larger um, in-game faction to protect their crusader space mm. so generate passive income for the organization because of views or because of the amount of persons who join the org so crusader pays them or pays the organization passively or even through views, right? Mm -hmm. Persons who click on it. Hmm. Interesting. Different way to look at it. Okay. Well, if anybody else doesn't have anything in relation to this aspect of uh, what the what the uh, community could submit, we we know they're talking about music. And we're, run, we're running late tonight, guys, so I would like to go a little bit more into some other things, but we are going to cap it off for the evening. Uh, but I do appreciate all the wonderful things that were shared. We do have some questions, a couple questions here that uh we've been asked about so i'm going to take a quick look at those real quick before we close out the show um first question comes from black sky legion well actually it's a statement but it is i think it's something that's affirming he says imagine sitting at a bar in the game to watch isc or sel or other official media from uh this is ci live with your friends um and, and I, that's interesting prospect we talked about that being able to watch things in game with your friends and stuff right versus you know, bringing up your computer screen, turning on Twitch or something like that. I do think there's some cool things about that, but I also do um, have feelings about bringing real world into the game world. But, you know, Calrati, you said maybe there's an option. If you want to do it, you do. If not, no big deal, you know. Um, also, Shimpasta, 
Jim Pasta kind of brings up something from a different perspective about shows, current shows. He says, what if CIG brought in real life SC videos, ISC, SCL, YouTube videos, but made it look like the old 21st century show? Uh, so he's talking about like an old oldies channel, you know? <laughs> <laughs> you go there and watch the, you know, the old black shows, you know, black and white. Yeah, you know, maybe that's a way to sneak it in and keep it within lore, you know. That's interesting, Shimpasta. I don't know how much work it would take to convert it to make it look like an old show, but... Or it can be a chip. Uh, passively as being an unknown transmission and you find it at the right kitchen oh, and you have to put it into your ship. Yeah. That way you can actually watch it on your screen. Watch your it that way. <laughs> That'd be something different to do. Okay. All right. Well, listen, we are at the end of our show. Thank you guys. We hope you guys enjoyed the interesting conversation and all of our theory crafting and everything and some of the history of what we showed you guys on where CIG has been in relation to broadcasting, where they are now and where they could go in the future. We're, we're very optimistic. We see a lot of possibilities, a lot of possibilities in where this whole broadcasting thing can go when it comes to the star citizen universe. Um, but I want to, uh, first of all, thank our people who are here today, EE Studios, uh, Natronics. Nate, tell people where people can find more about you, what you guys do or you do and where they can find you. So uh, EE Studios is just what that what it is on YouTube. It's a machinima channel. We have our SC's first feature length film and then a few series and other stuff. And then Hubnet, which is a Discord, which you can find linked on our About section which is a collaboration uh, between myself and Zark Media and other mach machinima creators. If you want to get involved in machinima or just help or just be around that world, you can join HubNet. It's open to everybody. Awesome. Awesome. And you guys have been doing great work. You know, we, we always look forward to, you know, when I'm, I'm the one who usually scans for machinima for our Thursday show. And if I see something out there, it automatically goes into the watch list so that I can make sure it's something that we're going to cover. So, I want to congratulate you guys on the great work that you guys are doing. And keep doing it. Keep doing it. Thank you. Thank it gets you. better and better every time we see it. Fist to Thank Face you. and Pops, New Soul, Sound People, these people who make beautiful music for the verse. Tell people where they can find you guys. Well, you yeah, can find at this. Oh, at your house. Oh, sorry. <laughs> yeah, sorry. All right. All right. Yeah, that was good. Um, yeah, you can find us on Twitter at New Soul Sounds, um, Instagram, same thing. Um, you can find us uh YouTube. Uh Ops Chief just put the link in the channel. Um, you know, hopefully, you know, not hopefully we do have some things in the works. Um that actually you Griff are well let's not even of. talk about that. Talk about what you do have out there now. You guys have been working with Paul and putting music behind actually, some I, of his yeah, stuff, current stuff, right? right? You're yeah. right. Yeah. You're right. You're talk right. You're right. Um well we do have a um we just did uh it was a forty three minute video that Paul did for the lore makers that we we wrote the score for. Um to uh it was a fantastic video um, I don't want to give away too much. Go check it out on uh, the Astro um, Historian, I believe, mm -hmm. channel. Yep. Um, we also did um, the music for uh, Atmo Esports. Um, they've been debuted uh, the first uh, Stanton Seven mm -hmm. um, uh, race. Um, so they'll be running that um, during the uh, beginning of the race. Their intro music. Um, awesome. Man, shoot, you know. Yeah, that's, you know, pretty much it right now. So, okay. well, you yeah. guys are working with a lot that's of folks amazing. in the community too. You guys have been connecting with a lot of folks yeah. and folks are finding out about you, which is great. So congratulations to you guys too. And all the hard work that you guys done, by the way, these are the two guys that produce the music for all our shows. So we yeah. all hear our intros oh, wow. and our background yeah. music. They produce all the music for our different shows. Like every once in a while I hit them up and say, I need you to make something for me. So they've been, they've been making all of our music. We all original music that comes directly from them. So thank you guys for that. Um, if you would, oh, and they do that music uh, trivia during the, uh, oh yeah, during the bar citizens. Yeah. 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 yeah, yeah, yeah. They, they confuse yeah. everybody during the bar citizens. That's right. So <laughs> hey, I want, yeah. I want two chefs because of them. So thank you. We <laughs> take bribes. Yeah. <laughs> Jade, why don't you tell everybody about Thursday? Cal Roddy, you tell everybody about Saturday and I'll talk about Sunday. All right. So yeah, Thursday is Soul Talk. And that's the show, you know, this is the show where we talk with you. Soul Talk's the show where you talk with us. Like you, you come into the Discord and uh, we'll put you on. And don't be afraid uh, because, you know, it's, you don't have to worry. Like we're, we're all in this community and it's nothing but love. 
But uh, yeah, that's the Thursday show. It's at 9 p.m. Eastern time. Mm-hmm. So, you know, if, if you ever wanted to like, you know, talk about Star Citizen with a bunch of Star Citizen nerds, just come on in and talk with us. Awesome. Right, so Saturday, 3 p.m. Eastern Time, Still Voices, where we talk about community concerns, game concerns, any kind of concerns and any kind of discussions that you want to have, from Reddit to Spectrum to in-game to all of it. You know, just pop on in, 3 p.m. Eastern Time, talk about anything Star Citizen, so jump on in. And of course, we are part of Griffin today. Yeah, well, there's going to be one. Yeah, our Thursday show is a group conversation, and our Saturday show is a one-on-one. So you get to come in and talk with me directly. And if you come on Thursday, you get to listen to Fast Cart and his bad jokes. So take your pre- preference, whichever you want to go with. That's the way to go. <laughs> or you can ban him from making jokes. Or you can ban jokes. him from making jokes, right? Yeah, we put that in now. Um, it and listen, doesn't work. It doesn't work. Yeah, no. <laughs> mm. um, next Sunday, we're doing a show called Shoots and Scores. Uh, kind of a springboard off of this show. We're going to have folks on who put together machinimas and how they have to put together both visual and audio together to create these great stories, whether it's a commercial like what you saw there with Wicked Wookie, or whether it's long form versions like what you see EE Studios doing. Um, We're gonna be having guests on that are gonna talk about that process of what it takes to bring those really cool cinematics and machinimas that we all love to see on YouTube and we hope to see in game one day. So that's going to be next Sunday, 8 p.m. Eastern time. You guys can join us for that. We would really, really appreciate it. Uh, other than that, that's about it. We are going to wrap it up for the day. Special thanks to our mods. Ops Chief is out there today. Fast Cart's out there harassing us too. Thank you guys for doing all the hard work for us. Thank everybody who, who's here today. And uh, thanks for telling folks about us. Don't forget to tweet, like. We've got all the social media platforms. But tell people that you were at Soul Citizens. And uh, we really appreciate it. Other than that, we are going to set up our raid. We are going to be rolling Pro Quesadilla tonight. Uh, so when you get over with Pro, make sure you let them know that you came from the Soul Citizens. If you like what you see, follow them, give a shout out. And as always, thank you guys for being here with us this evening. Hopefully we'll see you next week. Until then, peace, love, and soul. We'll talk to you guys later. Take care. Be safe. Great week. <laughs>